Hey guys, it's David Spade here. Applause, applause, standing ovation. Um, it's uh, everyone has been asking me where I go on tour, literally every single person in the world. So I'm playing the Venetian in uh, Las Vegas with Nikki Glaser coming up in April. And then we do it three more times. Check davidspade.com. That's not a plug. It sounds like one. It's not. Anyway, have fun. Here we go. Bye, wazoo. Christ sakes. You got the Mark Twain prize? That's a pithy Darby moniker. <laughs> I had 50 million in the SVP bank. I got 50 left. Greatest mind of his generation with a cracker jack motif, okay? <laughs> I got, went away with fucking <clears throat> Super Bowl. This is, this is Liam Neeson. What the fuck does Adam Sandler have to do with Mark Twain? If you don't tell me, I will kill you. And I have. <laughs> Dane and I are doing Adam Sandler's Mark Twain. We'll just tell the audience. We uh, will have just done Adam's Mark Twain Award. Yes, and we're coming up and with we're We have to do stuff, fly out there and do stuff for him. And we yeah, don't I've know what to do. Dana's got to oh, sing yeah. a song. You could probably do it. And, uh, it's after. and then we're going to introduce Jay Leno. Mm -mm -mm. This was just a refrain. And Jay was great. Take me Mark Twain, man. Mark Twain, man. Take me Mark Twain, man. <laughs> That's the catchphrase. That's the catchphrase. Ooh. Don't give it all away. Probably bombed at the place we're going. No, we got to fly Taylor across country. CE, don't be scared. <laughs> don't be scared of mm. wealth and money. Here's and... what'll make everybody happy. She's cold as ice. You can do it on guitar too. Yeah. Paradise. And the feeling was so nice. Yeah. Cold as ice. There's a lady I know. She ordered Amazon. You have to update it. <laughs> she, <laughs> she ordered Amazon. And they delivered her broccoli from HelloFresh. <laughs> she bought it home. And even though it's 2040. She chop on broccoli. She <laughs> She's broccoli, old school. Broccoli. People still have to take a sharpened object and chop the damn yeah. vegetable. That's not, that's not from the 80s. She chop on broccoli. She chop on broccoli. She broccoli. Jay Leno is a great uh, influence on <laughs> comics. Take a hint. We grew up. No, I thought it was Gover. It was great. <laughs> that was great. I thought it was... We got all the chopping broccoli. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Ah. Anyway, Jay came all the way in. He sat down right there. Jay Leno. Two broken ribs and a broken collarbone. He was not a complainer. He's old school. He's the ultimate not complainer. He's and, a super um, cool He came dude. in like a trooper. And he's a great storyteller. Mm -hmm. We had some great Rodney Dangerfield stuff, the time he opened for Bill Cosby at yeah. Harris. Yeah, uh, that was a great. That was very interesting. Mm -hmm. and, and how Cosby was perceived at The Tonight Show. But, you know, mm -hmm. we all grew up on Leno, and he was one of the great comics, and uh, he knows all the SNL guys. He's had them all on the show. And he's just so tied into everything. And we just wanted, and we, we've seen him out, and we said, come on and talk to us. And it's good to those shows that are just comedy. He laughs. He yeah. says funny things. And the, the connection really to SNL is so many of us were stand-ups that got SNL, Sandler, you, me, mm -hmm. on and on. And Jay loves stand-up. So does mm -hmm. Jerry Seinfeld. So we do talk a lot about stand-up. For anyone listening that might want to think about doing stand-up, Jay is a master class in the technique and the attitude you need to become a successful stand-up. And Dana does impression of him to him. And Jay was like, yeah. Well, I did the low one. You know, you know, it's trying to be crazy. The Henderson neighbor boy, you know, they said he was <laughs> caught by the police. What's that? You know, what's that? why do people think this? And then he goes down there. And I told him that he had those two gears. It's not just the high gear. Yeah. It's the bass guy, too. And The bass guy goes... What's yeah. going on here, Japanese cars? Yeah. Yeah, Japanese cars. Well, it's got two cylinders on it. It tops out about 30 miles an hour. I guess I got, I can get one of those. You hear the engines <laughs> going. <laughs> but he was uh, yeah. just the guy when we were coming up as mm -hmm. a pure stand up. He rode a motorcycle to the club. He had weird eyes, giant hair piled up. And he was a big, big presence. Low maintenance the guy. Store. Yeah. Came over here, knocked it out. Everything's fine. Face was still on fire, which I thought they would have put it out by now. It was smoldering, but he looked incredible. He looks really good. By I the mean, way, he's the only one in show business who doesn't have a writer. That's very Jay Leno. Writer, a writer backstage. means you, the people are booking you, you, you need a Diet Coke or you need some carrot sticks. Jay <laughs> has not a writer. 
his <laughs> Diet Coke carrot sticks, Slinky, Cheese Its, and crack cocaine. <laughs> and a link to you porn. <laughs> and a woman named Susie with a uh, yoga <laughs> mat. <laughs> and a uh, gift certificate to the Purple Nurple. That's your joke. This voice is just funny for you. It doesn't have to be Johnny Carson. It's just a funny voice. It's Hello. Jimmy Cricket. I don't, oh, I, I read for Jimmy Cricket. You did? Yeah. Hey, come on. I'm Jimmy Cricket. Yeah, I had it. I had it perfect for an afternoon. I I'm recorded no it. No, sorry. I'm going to live to be 93. Remember he used to sing that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had a couple tunes. I love Jimmy Cricket. All right, here's Jay Leno, you guys. Here's Jay Leno, one of the all times. Gentlemen, hey. gentlemen, young people, young people. Welcome to the hot seat. Good Men to see of you, business, buddy. men of commerce. Great Good to, to see, see you. you. I love Jay. Good to see Finally. you guys. Oh, Jay thank you. has interviewed me 300 <laughs> times. I know. That's right. But now. I know, I know. Now we're going to see how hard it is. The shoe's on the other foot. Yeah. yeah, you guys are good on the after show. Oh, you saw that? Yeah, I thought it was good. Oh, the Netflix. Because I was like, where's this going to go? Oh, it was I mean, a nightmare. Huh? <laughs> it was a little no, tricky. No, I thought, I mean, it was awkward. It didn't look awkward. I mean, Thank I mean, you. it was. You were the two white comics. Yeah. What do you mean? And you addressed that <laughs> in a funny way, <laughs> right? And, yeah. and you let them do the talking. No, well, yeah. No, yeah, I thought. True. I mean, it wasn't a matter of you know overpowering it or no. You know, a lot of times they, when they put five comedians in a room with if two, one is funny, five will be hilarious. No, it doesn't work. But right. that was funny. Everybody had something interesting to say. Oh yeah. Right. Thank you. We had. Uh, uh, you know, that was Rock's idea. He said it would be sort of fun to have this, you know, because they want to make the first live event a bigger event. And they said, well, you know, it could be like a uh, fight, you know, people talking before, people talking after. I couldn't really picture that, but they explained it more. And I go, yeah, we could it just worked. discuss it, you know, like what jokes worked, what didn't you know, the crowd I thought was like. he was great. <laughs> and he was great. And I was oh, stunned that? at the reviews. Oh, they like, gave him some shit, yeah. Like, you know, old man Rock yelling, get off my lawn. Yeah. <laughs> And people have no idea how long it takes to put an act together. Yeah. I no, know. it's it's so difficult what he landed. I mean, they just think, oh, they're, yeah, they're old-fashioned jokes, but they're great jokes. Well, I'm just That's tired hard. of Netflix specials. Hey, Baltimore. Woo, yeah, Baltimore. Denver, Denver. Yeah. And, and they're watching the clock. They know, okay, I got 58 more minutes I got to fill. He had jokes every step of the way. Oh, yeah. yeah. He worked his ass that, off. That's what I liked about it. Yeah, I like that he know. went where no man, it, one of my jokes is, I like that Chris went where no comedian is brave enough to go, Baltimore. Uh, yeah, that was funny because when we, we did the after show, they wanted a nice mix. And what you just said, I wanted to jump back to is they said, it's you and Dana. And we thought there would be no prep. We just said, oh, we'll just talk about after and our, our initial reactions. And they said, oh, and we'll have other comics join you. And I said, okay, I think our first thing was, don't get it too crazy. It's not like the Super Bowl halftime show. Right, right. They said, we could have like six other comics. I go, no, 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 that's... Yeah. Because no one's going to get to talk and they want a nice mix. And, uh, you know, Kareem has, has talked about Rock's situation before. Very interesting guy. You don't see a lot. I said, oh, that's yeah. great. He wants to come. Mm -hmm. And uh, JB Smoove, we got to get him out of his shell. Right. And yeah. then uh, if we can just prod him to no, chat. We, we needed him because it was like yeah. we're watching Chris and he's just really hammering that last 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Don't ever fight in front of white people. Mic drop energy. And I just saw, you know, then it's like, hi, everybody. You know, it's just funny, really. Well, we no, had to acknowledge something. JB Smooth came and they brought the energy in. No, I thought CD. it was very good. It was a nice transition. I think, what is this going to be? But no, it wasn't. It wasn't. What do you think? I don't know. You, I mean, yeah. Everybody had something to say. Would you mind if I tweet your review? <laughs> no, no. Yeah, you can tweet it. Yeah, yeah. No, I like, I think comics realize. Are we recording now? Yeah. We're always recording. Oh, we always this recording. is like when Wait. you would come back before yeah. The Tonight Show right. and we'd kind of do with right. all your guests. Now now that's part of the show. Right. Okay. So this is us backstage. And you can take out anything you want. No, uh, um, no I'm fine. Jay, are you cool if this mic's a little bit closer to you? No, that's fine. There we go. He knows his way around you the know, microphone, okay? <laughs> by the way, I did, I did like when you would come back at The Tonight Show and say hi because some people don't. And I, I understand both ways, but I thought it was fun that you did. Yeah, I always liked it because I, I mean, that's how you get them to come back. You know, yeah, they have they have a nice experience. Yeah, people go, oh, okay, you're not going to bring them a cocaine bus. No, I got to ask you about it. I'll just ask you, and you answer anyway. Oh, okay, <laughs> yeah, say whatever <laughs> answer you want. Yeah, and yeah, we'll just yeah. Move on. I got to ask you, you. Yeah. So Jay, you look great. I mean, I, if no well, one, thank you, thank and, you. But you I'm good. just saying, 
Uh, blink. If someone told me you didn't, your face didn't catch on fire. I didn't I go, think sure, of, that of course it now. Oh, this I don't all, see anything. This all new face. Yeah, that's good. It did you a mean good job. You like did it in eight days? I, I missed. I missed two shows. <laughs> <laughs> see, I love that about you. And I knew when that <laughs> yeah, happened, yeah. when your eyes opened from whatever they did, do you'd be like, eh, "Can well, I go now to Cleveland?" I got, I got a, I got a broken collarbone. I got two busted ribs. And I got two cracked kneecaps because I got. Clotheslined on my motorcycle. No, we that heard about the that. scariest situation. Yeah, that was really, yeah. was it at night or just you went around a corner and there was a no, wire. No, I was I was riding. Okay, you're a 72 year old guy and an 83 year old motorcycle. <laughs> okay, what could go wrong? So I'm going like, uh, 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 oh, it's dripping gas. I don't want to catch fire. 155. Again. Let me, I catch fire again. Let me turn around. I turn around in a parking lot and the guy had a wire across the parking lot but with, with no flag, you know? Right. And mm -hmm. the sun was right here and I went, and boom, it just oh, hit me. Oh my God, you just take your right head off. Right in your chest, neck area. Yeah, yeah. And if then it, you went. Well, it it cut my face again. So I called my face guy. I go, listen, you, you know the face, you gave me that new face. I got to get it fixed. What'd you do? I, I told him, I said, I drove up there and he fixed it again. So it's all right. God damn, this that is guy's, a brand new ear. That guy's well, good, Well, what do you mean dude? a brand new ear? I mean, the, when you, with, when with you get burned, graphing? when you get yeah. burned in a fire, mm -hmm. It, it, ears are like paper. There's nothing. It just it just goes up. So that's just boom. And they grafted it like from kindling. someplace else. Yeah. Well, I got a buddy of mine who's a moil. He gave me a bag of grafts, and they worked out great. So you can't even. <laughs> <laughs> you look good. I'm telling you, Dana just said it, and I was like, Oh wait, you did do that thing, and and you fucking have all your hair, which is infuriating. Yeah, yeah so that's right. what I was Fine thinking about me. today. Yeah, your hair looks. Cool. I was thinking about young Jay <laughs> coming on stage. You always had the motorcycle. Oh, oh, yeah, the the motorcycle boots, right? Yeah. Incredibly thick, high black thick, hair. Juicy. So right you're right, kind of yeah. like hulking. You're like six three. Your eyes are. Well, considering I've only been six foot, that I must have grown. <laughs> well, you had the boot, motorcycle <laughs> boots. Oh, the boots. So, yeah, yeah. I guess so, that would make it. Yeah, yeah. yeah right, right, and you right. have really Italian skin, and then super pale blue eyes. Yeah. And then you'd come up, and people when they do impressions of you. They'll sort of go to this branch, right? But right. most of the time, you were this guy. Well, you know, what's really bothering me uh -huh. today, yeah, and it was it. very right. potent. <clears throat> and you only did that to break up that tenor to kind of talk to the crowd. Right, I don't understand. Right. And then you bring the guy in. Well, they said the Henderson boys are good. Yeah, 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 only killed the guy. So anyway, that was my thing. I was thinking today. I wanted to tell you about. Oh well, thank you. I appreciate <laughs> that. But you, I saw you at the Ice House. Uh, I don't know what year, mid eighties. I'd never seen anyone kill that hard. That was the first time I'd actually seen you fully like, dismantle the room. No, I'd seen you at one in California, I think, at a theater. Well, you remember you and I flew to New York for your audition. I got that on my notes. For, for what, Life. SNL? Yeah, for SNL. Well, I, by that point, I pretty much had it, I think. Yeah. And I was going to do it, and then we sat together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, I remember you saying, are you sure you can do this? I don't think it's a good fit. I just made that up. <laughs> what no, did I'm, we talk about? What were you going to do, Letterman? I think so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Were you prepared? Yeah, that was my favorite. You know, Letterman was the first show where I could be myself. Because, yeah, I grew yeah. up in New England, and I would always call, thank you, Mr. Carson. Yeah, call me Johnny. What? I, I, I didn't grow up, right. you know, like come to California. Sure. Jay, these are my parents, uh, Bob and Agnes. Well, how are you, Mr. Manicelli? I can't call you Bob and Agnes. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> You're my friends. But you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and then with Letterman, I could go, hey, Dave, nice tie. Or just, you know, just trash yeah, the Yeah, because you knew him for years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, 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 which you couldn't do with Johnny. So that's why it was a great breakthrough. Well, that's why I would sometimes, I don't really know why, wear a T-shirt or this jacket. Um, and you'd be in a tie, but then one... When you retired, whatever, every host was younger than me. We had a tie on. Yeah. So then I started wearing a tie. Yeah. <laughs> go, yeah. You know, funny. I'm it's too funny. young to come out with a, you know. But I, yeah, that I was. I saw Jay when he was on, um, when I was just a little, I wasn't a stand up and I was watching Johnny Carson. Johnny and, Carson. you know, there was Seinfeld, there was you. And I think everyone at that age just loves comedy. Right. And so I wasn't thinking of being a comedian. But do you remember anything? I'm going to mangle this. It was after the Exxon Valdez oil spill. And you said, and, and you know, they were trying to save electricity in America. And I think right. you said, uh, you know, they spill six million gallons of oil and then they want us to save three cents a year by going to the bathroom in the dark. Right. And I started laughing so hard. It was something like that. And uh, I do kind of remember that. And that's when I was like, I mean, you have a million sets you've done, but I thought, God damn it. And, and you, you've always had such economical, smart jokes that are just, 
and you're just about the mechanics and putting them together. And I think if well, you, it is the economy of words comedy, isn't of it? Of course, I mean, the, the, the shorter it takes One to word, get there, too much. Yeah, and it's it, done. That's what I liked about Chris' special. It just joke, oh, joke, it was joke. Yeah. solid. I just, I'm just tired of these specials where. People have done two already. They've committed to a third or a fourth, mm -hmm. <laughs> and they so just got it. What's Ooh, up? How you all doing? Yeah. yeah. Woo! Yeah. And, yeah. And, what else is up? Yeah, you yeah. and Jerry are lockstep on that because when I did the coffee show with him and Cars, he goes, "You're here because you're special because you came out and just went right into the jokes." Well, so you and he have such a. Well, I remember a comic I had on the Tonight Show. I won't say who it is, but uh, he, had, no. <laughs> he, he, he 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 had just done a, a a special for one of them. And I said, where do you go? Well, I'm going on the road, you know, for a special. I said, why? You got a new hour already? He goes, no, no. I'm, no, I do, I do, you know, I do what I did in the special. I go, okay, you know, this is not, <laughs> it's not the Eagles play Hotel California again. Mm -hmm. I mean, if they just saw you, they will watch you the night before they go see you. Mm -hmm. And the next day, if you repeat even one way, he goes, no, I don't think so. Like, all right. Next time he was on the show, he's like, oh, man. You <laughs> yeah. people well, I just learned this, Dana. Yeah. I just did a special. I haven't yeah. done very many. I did an HBO special back in, mm -hmm. during Just Shoot Me and SNL days. Right. <clears throat> didn't know how rare it was because HBO didn't do that many. Right, right. And there wasn't a Netflix one every week. And that, mm -hmm. it took me a while to rotate that material out. You know, I was doing other stuff. It's hard to, it wasn't my number one job at that point. And then getting back into it, it, it took me a while to say, okay, if I do a special, by the time it gets out, you better be ready. And that's that's very hard because it came out in two months. So I've rotated stuff and I'm probably about 80% new, but that 20%, some love to hear it and some have a problem with it. Right, yeah, because they, they watch it again. You know, that's why I've never done one of those. I did one back in the 80s. I owned it, I put it on, and then I burned it. <laughs> and I said, that's well, it. Wasn't comedy surprise part yeah. of it? Yeah. Surprise? Said, so if you've the seen The master's the gone. Nobody can run it again. What about the McDonald's trainee bit? Because that was the one. <laughs> what was that one? I don't know. You were doing a <laughs> McDonald's <laughs> riff. This is you at the ice house levitating the room, which I call <laughs> complete destruction. Yeah. Some about the guy's a trainee and like he doesn't know how to make a milkshake or something, but it was just, like, <laughs> it was just with uh, such. I know fun. that's not it. <laughs> <laughs> but you didn't just do <laughs> jokes. You words. would ring jokes together and you do, you did. <laughs> Act outs too, you know. I mean, yeah, you did that yeah. character talking, and so you had a lot of different tools, but you always great at jokes. Also, someone like Jay doesn't need a special because I, I'm on your side on that one for you because you always sell out, you always do well, and that's sort of the point of a special is to get people out and well, they know you. I, they I like had the you. advantage of the Tonight Show. You're doing a monologue every night, and you never repeat that material because it it just. That's you know. too bad. Hey, because... how about Reagan's trip to Pittsburgh? You can't be on the road. <laughs> you know, yeah, Dick yeah. Cheney, what's that all about? And those, you stumble into some good jokes and monologues, and that's a bummer because you're like, oh, this would, I know. This would do I great. Know. Sometimes you get some good ones. Yeah. 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 Go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. You know, I, where were we? Go ahead. Oh, just do you ever get people yelling out for old bits? Like, because they were kind of hit so hard. Maybe like, hey. once, but not so much anymore. Mm -hmm. No, no. I don't know. So really. you have essentially the same, you, your core act is still the same, and you just add little things Basically, to Basically, you uh, add subtract. Mm -hmm. I mean, because people are like, oh, boy, I saw you last year. You got all new material. No, I don't. Yeah. You just have a bad memory. <laughs> yeah. You know, they don't. But if if they watch it three times on. Like, I remember getting the uh, a Bob and Ray album. Remember mm -hmm. the, uh, the- Oh, yeah, Bob and Ray. With yeah. the um, Komodo dragon. Mm -hmm. Must have played that a hundred times. It just made me <laughs> laugh every time. <laughs> then I'm a person, oh, it's the same It's the same thing. You know, sometimes yeah. when I go to the comedy store and I'm with people and I see Sebastian, I see someone, I say, oh, I hope he does these ones that I had right. heard once and I think they'll think they're funny. So they're, that's sort of, I, I feel a little bit of that and and it's odd that it's different than the bands because you've heard those songs, but you love to hear them. So right. it's a different uh, different genre. Mm -hmm. I understand. I think you did one. Uh, oh yeah, did you say? Here's an old joke. I don't know why I'm just bringing up old jokes. But when he says, you say you go stay at your parents' house at Thanksgiving and you see Matlock. You watch Matlock with him, and then you come back a year later and see the only rerun of the only Matlock you've ever seen in your life <laughs> is playing the next time you go. Wasn't Matlock for a long time just a funny it's a great word? Funny, that was a great a funny reference <laughs> watching <laughs> Matlock. I'm so mad it's gone. Mannix was good. Matlock. Matlock. Instant, instant laughs. You know, um, comedy words. What was I going to say about that? Matlock. Oh, Matlock. No, uh, Ma you know, Mannix, that guy, Mike Connors. Yeah. He was a great guy. You know, he came to the show a couple of times. I remember he was the first show. Remember his secretary, Peggy, was mm -hmm. African-American? 
Okay. And CBS came to him and said, uh, you got to get rid of the African-American girl. <laughs> Southern affiliates are uh, not happy. They don't want to have a black person on TV. And he refused. He said, well, I won't do the show. Mm. You know, I always thought that was, and this was in this mid 60s mm -hmm. when, well, of course you fire her. What are right, you no talking about? You, got, you know, and he didn't. That's cool. You know, so he was, uh, yeah, he was quite a guy. He was a great guy. It, it's he odd. used to have that. He used to have a tornado with the roof cut off. It was painted gold. You know, it looked mm -hmm. like one of those superhero cars. And when he'd follow <laughs> somebody, he'd get below the seat, like you know, like <laughs> here's this gold projectile behind you. <laughs> He's trying to be yeah, yeah, yeah. incognito. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what about Cannon? Oh, this is going way too back. Cannon. Yeah, I remember Cannon. Cannon yeah. was the funniest. He was a sort of an overweight, well, um, a lot of sort of overweight. <laughs> sort of, yeah. Well, the thing with Cannon was the criminal would run down the alley. And mm -hmm. he'd always run on the driver's side so Cannon could open the door. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and then smash yeah, him out. Every, every week they did that, yeah. yeah oh, the so 70s. Yeah. Did you ever have like uh, movie stars come on from your youth when you're hosting a Tonight Show? That was sort of special in a way. I got to do a sketch with Robert Mitchum once. And yeah. It was kind of a surreal trip, you know? Yeah, it was. I remember I had, uh, what's his name? Um, Charlton Heston. No, no, he played, uh, he did the Bond, um, not... Uh, uh, Roger Moore. Roger Moore. Yeah. You know. So he comes, oh, Jay, hello, Jay. So it was so, said, so I understand you like to travel. Yes. yes I travel. Oh, where do you go on vacation? India. Oh, India. Well, that's quite a trip. No, not really. <laughs> well, well how, how, how do you get there? We drive. You you drive to India. Yes, yes. It's a, a, a very pleasant. Nice trip. Um, from, from where? <laughs> and now he's getting an order. Well, from my home, of course. Well, I'm, I'm thinking, how do you, I look, I look at Debbie, she's going, I don't know, I don't know. Yeah. What's going on? I, I said, well, how do you drive to India? Well, it's about two hours, I suppose. Two hours to India. I suppose. He, he said, yes, yes. So why is and then I realized he was saying Indio, California. Oh my the God. whole time? The whole time, but he pronounced it India. <laughs> you know, I'm thinking, oh, well, it's a, it's a beautiful no, country. And he's going, well, yeah, it's a, I don't know it's a country. But Very yeah, hot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sometimes. <laughs> you know, he should come see yeah. me in Morongo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's talk about his cars. I like your cars. I don't know if Dana. Well, well let's go you. back to the beginning. When when did you realize? Like, I don't when know why they have this phrase. One of my sons... <laughs> He thinks he's as into cars as you are. Mm -hmm. Then people call them car nuts. I don't know why. Oh, yeah. But when did you realize cars? Because my son, when I he was two and had little cars, it was over. Would you, can you remember the first time you became fascinated? Was it a well, model? Well, anything of a car? that rolls, explodes, and makes noise was, you know, <laughs> it's fun. If you have an album, that's it. Anything yeah. that rolls. Well, it's explodes. different now because you know when I was a kid, it was your only escape. Mm -hmm. I mean now. You know, right. it's virtual kids television. are in the room, you call your girlfriend, hey, send me a naked picture. Okay, great. You know, in my day, I had to, <laughs> you first you had to get to the girl's house, make sure her parents weren't home. Right, sneak Somehow in the window. Somehow convince her to take her clothes off. Get the pole. Take right. the picture and then go to a drugstore three <laughs> towns away where the, where the druggist mm -hmm. didn't know your parents to get the pictures developed. It sounds like and a then, sense yeah, memory here. Yeah, the pictures back to be black parts over all the good stuff you know? oh. so you could yeah yeah that, that's what it used to be when i was a kid oh yeah yeah, yeah. you, you know, mix so, in a few skateboarding ones it's yeah gonna throw them off. yeah that's right did so, you have toy cars before you got real ones <laughs> you remember i suppose i did you must have SP? toy cars huh? yeah i, I had that I ssp where you oh we sound yeah so yeah old. yeah i had those i had those i had you a guys go remember, car I don't remember but that. i grew up in a rural area when, when i was 12 there was a car left by the side of the road and we took it back and got it running and i would drive it around my backyard my mom would stand at the kitchen window and watch us driving around our and how old were you 12 12 you know yeah uh, now, of course, child services would services, come and your parents would be arrested. Arrest your arrested your parents. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. My mom would have been in yeah. jail. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Because every, just because yeah. she let us walk to 7-Eleven. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's funny, I was, you were saying something about Mannix. Um, <laughs> Let's go when I was Mannix. When I moved to LA, it was, uh, I'm jumping around, but it was very odd to see a superstar from a movie out of the show. I saw him at 7-Eleven or something, or you see like a guy from Chips. And you're like, wait, are you a real person? Even though mm -hmm. I'm older, I should know this. Right. I don't really get what they're doing in real life. And I don't like you it. You couldn't really. stop looking. I saw Michael Landon mm -hmm. when I was 10 in a restaurant. It's just like up. surreal. Well, I was in Boston Airport and I saw um, Art Garfunkel. 
And I mm. saw him, and I hid behind a pole. I don't know why. Why <laughs> <laughs> would you hide from our well, car? I, I saw him walk, and so I, I, I'd stick my head out, looking, and if he saw me, I'd like duck back. I go, Why am I doing this? Like, oh, he must it's hard to imagine you gonna, like that. You've I'm been famous assa- for so long. I'm an long. assassin. You know, but then those one of the teenagers, like, oh, that's they, a famous. I mean, when I first came to town, I, I landed in LA and I took a cab until the money ran out. He dropped me off at Sunset and Western. And, oh, and I was trying to get to the comedy store and I walked all the way back. Oh, that's a hike. And I was going through, uh, not quite lost, up n- near where the- um, uh, Hollywood sign? No, you know that Scientology place that's yeah. up there? Oh, yeah. What do they call that area? Uh, the Celebrity the Theater, that's Beechwood Canyon. Beach, Beechwood Canyon. Mm-hmm. And I Bingo. saw uh, the guy from uh, McHale's Navy- uh, Bernie Borgnine. No, not Bernie. Oh, oh, Tim Conway. No, no. The, the other one that used to, to do the bad magic act. What was his name? Do you know what I mean? Larry Storch. <laughs> no, no, not Larry Storch. But he was having a garage sale. <laughs> <laughs> and I went, that's, that's the guy from McHale's name. And I go, wow, how am I going to make it? He's on TV. <laughs> how am I going to make it? How am I going to make it? And he's selling his crap at a garage sale. This is, this how is, old were you uh, when you came to L.A.? Uh, I got 21, I guess. JD, and you'd already JD graduated college? For his couch. No, I came while I was still in college. And you studied speech, right? 20. Do you think that helped you get no, better? No, no. I only All took right. speech because... But you had to get up in front of the class and give speeches. Yeah, no, Look, I took it because the well, the syllabus, I think I said, at the end of the uh, semester, each student would be required to give a 20-minute talk. That's why I can uh, do that. But other guys go, oh, 20 minutes. Oh, man, I'm not taking that. I said, we just got to talk for 20 minutes. How hard is that? So that that's what I did. I, I took, but I had and, no interest in speech. And did you get laughs? You probably got laughs. I got a few laughs. You know what I did? I remember memorizing a George Carlin routine. And then I never said his material on stage, but I said it in my mind. And then when I got on stage, I put my own stories in. Uh, and when I was in school, you know, I remember going, okay, Carlin did the class clown. Da, 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 da. Oh, I see. And yeah. then I went, I, I, I kind of timed it, you know, I was off stage. Uh, so anyway, when I was in school and, I, <laughs> and then I just put my own stories yep. in and mm-hmm. that kind of worked a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Did you get messages earlier than that? Like when you're in fourth grade, fifth grade that you were a like class clown, funny. Yeah. That, that maybe I should do this. There were two jokes. I, did. I remember my first joke. Was in the fourth grade, Mrs. Allen, uh, where she's talking. <laughs> I had Mrs. Toit. Oh, yeah. She was talking about um, Robin Hood and how cruel the sheriff of Nottingham was. And when he captured <laughs> Robin Hood, he'd boil them in oil. <laughs> and I remember putting my hand up and I said, you know why he did that to, to Tuck? And she said, no, why? Because he was a friar. <laughs> yeah. you, call him, you call him Chuck, which helps too. Yeah, so, so it gets kind of a laugh, you yeah. know, and she goes, all right, all right, settle up. But I could see she was like smiling while she was admonishing me. And then later after class, I'm walking like in the it. hall and I see one of the male teachers come out of the male lunch. Hey, Lono, come here. What did what, 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 you say about the Robin Hood? I said, oh, oh. A uh, friar, he's a friar. Oh, that's what it was. Oh, yeah. I went, oh, she repeated my joke. Wow, and, that is cool. Oh, funny. And then I learned not to be a prop comic. I met my friend Joel and I. Mm. We had to do a skit, and I wrapped him in bandages, mm-hmm. and I wheeled him in on a uh, hand cart, like he was a mummy, yeah. and it said, <laughs> like, 2000 so. BC on his chest. You mm-hmm. know? And a lot one, of one of the stooges there goes, what's that number on his chest? So I saw that's the license plate that truck did hit him. You know, I got to laugh, but we had no more material. That was <laughs> and that's it. it. Yeah. Now, my friend is wrapped in bandages and, well, uh, okay, thank you. <laughs> I had a box of tr- uh, props because Robin yeah. had them. So for yeah. a while, and it was a Her. pain in the ass. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. I got, cause I couldn't write any jokes. So no, I had props. Right. I remember I used to do a bit with sunglasses. Mm-hmm. And one time I went on stage, I didn't have a glass. And I go, okay, that's it. I'm not <laughs> yeah, yeah. Be dependent on props. And yeah, so. I had a Gumby doll. And I'd hold it up and I, mm-hmm. ladies and gentlemen, Gumby, this is how bad my material was. And I would pull the legs apart and go, yeah. ah! <laughs> Got a big laugh. <laughs> I saw Carrot Top once sweating it out at the luggage, just staring. And I'm like, if his stuff doesn't fucking come down, he doesn't go on tonight. I know, I know. That's, that is, yeah, that's that me. is the problem. Just having, I love the idea of you fly there, you land at 745, it's six minutes to the theater. You got and you get four <laughs> minutes. You go. Oh, I got to kill four minutes before I go on. Kill four you, minutes. You know. You know what I mean, well, just guy. the mic stand, and then you walk yeah, out. Oh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. No, yeah, no rehearsal, Set no list. sound check. They can't believe it, can they? The crew. You, know, like, you need right anything? Joke, no. Tell joke, get check. So Actually, do people one, understand that that is your mantra. Well, one time I did a gig in Maine, and a guy had he had taken a church and converted it into a nightclub. Okay. Mm-hmm. And 
<clears throat> he said, I didn't get your rider. I said, you know, I'm not a rider guy. I don't want to be one of those red right. M&M guys. I said, I don't need anything. You don't need anything? I'm fine. <laughs> okay. I get there. Uh, okay, where's the mic? Okay, I go, well, you said you didn't need anything. I need a mic. He goes, You're kidding, well, no, really? You, you, said, you, you said you didn't need anything. I said, well, I mean, you don't have a house sound system? He goes, no, we bring it in for each act. Well, I, well, uh, so I got, how y'all doing? Oh, my God. So, yeah, so I just had to shout. I just shouted. And I, okay, from now I want adequate sound system. That's my rider. Yeah. Adequate, yeah. Mr. Microphone. Yeah. The sure. clubs. Yeah, if you were... saw my uh, rider, you'd. You beat me up in the park. Do you have a, a big no, yeah, ride. it's pretty. But it's just, it's the agents and stuff that make the rider. So no, in case they show me. up every two years, they have roast beef sandwiches. Yeah, yeah exactly. You know, but you always pay. I always love acts that have no idea they're paying for that vegetable plate. Yeah, you know, they, yeah, but I didn't really eat it. Yeah, you, you paid, paid for it. it. <laughs> what are you talking about? That was forty eight dollars. What are you talking about? Just a couple of pieces of salami. No, no, that's forty eight dollars. Yeah, they always come in sad. They go this weekend. They're like, Mister Spade, sorry, the tortilla chips weren't blue. I yeah. go, well, I mean, I'll eat them, but I'm not happy. I've had college kids rush. We only have three towels. Oh yeah, towels. Are I go. My thing. writer says four towels. I never said I needed a I towel. Know. How many yeah. comics are drenched in sweat? It's like, I know. We I only know. have three I towels. Yeah, I just that's my whole thing. Try not to be a pain in the ass, and I'll have you back. You know. Right. By the way, that that uh, mm -hmm. comedy magic club, I know you you just still do it, and I think you still do it. And uh, yeah, I've been there every such, Sunday since seventy eight. Such a great club, and I I swear I just do not want that club to ever go away because it's so so many memories and such a great place, great crowds, great backstage. Well, the nice thing is it has a an unwritten rule: say whatever you want, but. Uh, you know, don't, it's not, you know, sometimes I go in the comedy store and you have to be a gynecologist to follow the act, you know? <laughs> Well, where is that on the girl? I don't know where that is. <laughs> what is we're, that on the girl? Squirting yeah. and things. Yeah, yes, yes, I no, know. But, but I mean, it's just so, and then you, what happens is you wind up losing a portion mm -hmm. of the audience has sort of been tainted. I like kind of magical because it's, it's just regular people from around the country. Sometimes they're at LAX. Oh, I heard about this comedy club. So they're from all around the country, mm -hmm. but they have a normal sense of what yeah. is appropriate. You yeah. can do R. When it gets like triple X, it's like, okay, now yeah. you're Right, because you have the comedian, then you have right. a magi magician, and yeah. then you follow the magician. Right. Do you have any funny stories following a magician? Because I have a couple. <laughs> no, no, well, tell me. Uh, well, it was just great Scott. I think was oh, his name. Yeah, yeah. And he had the birds in his jacket. Yeah. You get, you see him getting ready, and he's putting. Yeah, I his don't want to know. How and his jacket it, yeah. is stuffed. Well, one night he's he bringing him out, and then they fly to the cage. He went like that, and it, it was either suffocated or not. <laughs> it just laid there. The other thing is, you're about to go on. He's saying good night, and he puts the birds. They fly, and they go in the cage, and then they lower it down. He takes the thing off. Hey, they've disappeared. They're all squished in the bottom. They're alive, but these birds. And then you go, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. Daniel Farfo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember working with, I remember this <laughs> magician was on in front of me and his first five minutes was awful. <laughs> and I said, you know, your last couple of jokes are pretty funny. Why don't you put those in the front? Oh, no, no, because I know nobody listens when you first get on stage. So I do my worst material up front. I go, well, <laughs> that doesn't get him to listen. And the guy never <laughs> went over. And you never went anywhere. Yeah, yeah, a lot exactly. of guys telling you things, you kind of go, and then, know, then they, they disappear. Like comedy teacher. But I just know so many comics that rock it to the middle because the act is so <clears throat> filthy, mm -hmm. you know, and they kill. Right. And then they go, why, why aren't I headlining? Or crowd work. They get dependent on crowd yeah, work. Yeah, And then one night there's not a very good crowd to have fun with, and right. NBC's right. there and goes up Yeah, playing. I mean, you're there to work. Write mm -hmm. joke, tell joke, get checked. I Write mean, joke. Pretty... This is for the kids listening yeah. Yeah. right now. Write it, joke, tell it joke. It gets into the simplest thing because you can really trick yourself out. I've seen a lot of self-destruction, a lot oh, of yeah. not like- you... Comedians do anything to get out of writing a joke. Yeah. I'm doing a special where I just, I interview people about the news and talk about their problem. Yeah, but you're a comedian. You know, they, they don't, yeah. The comedy just... special now is a wider net. It's not just- tell jokes it's obviously turned into authenticity i will do this i will do this and if there's no jokes the applause you know they're more revered yeah by the critics because they're like oh this guy didn't tell one joke this was unbelievable i guess so i, I mean i don't love it <laughs> believe it it's not my thing go. you know what i mean it's like i see a lot of comics and 
they're talking about their inner this or something. I go, <laughs> their inner this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, okay. This. Hey, this is not going to work at the sand and gravel convention in Vegas. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sand and gravel. You, <laughs> out there, and you're talking about, you know, I really see myself. Shut up, tell a joke. Yeah. That's why I always love Rodney. You know, I knew Rodney 40 years. I have no idea who he voted for. I don't know if he's a Republican or a Democrat. Right. It was just jokes. Lockout crush. But it yeah. was so many jokes around the motif of Her. the saddest life ever. Yeah. I yeah. mean, he may, I, I'll watch him on YouTube sometimes just just at night. I'm like, makes me laugh harder now. Because yeah. the, just the idea of him yeah. and his delivery and the amount of great jokes. And they just- My be, favorite Rodney plum- joke is just, the, he says- uh, I, I walked past a, a, a nightclub. It's a topless and bottomless. I went in. There was nobody there. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> hey, I got I to watch that. My wife show, showed up at the front door in a negligee. She was coming home. I, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he had so many of those. Yeah, and yeah. to memorize them all and move that quickly. Well, I'll tell you, a Rodney, so I, had, I had him on The Tonight Show in 2004. And he goes out, and he's in his 80s. And hey, how are you? Tell you I'm okay mm-hmm. today, but last week, you know. And I noticed he's sweating more than normal. Yeah. And I said to Debbie, I said, uh, my producer, I said, I think Rodney's having a stroke. Call the paramedics. She goes, well, I don't think so. I go, no. He 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 was off enough that I wouldn't. I you know mm-hmm. the hand wouldn't come all the way up to the tie to the tie. Mm-hmm. He would just sort of get close. We used to yeah. go, oh, I tell you, <laughs> yeah. And I thought he just seemed a little up. So then he came over in the panel. He sat down and really sweating. And okay, then the show ends. Fine. Like, and, and by that time the uh, paramedics show up. You know. And I go, Rodney, can a paramedic take a look at it? I think maybe he had a stroke. He goes, no, I'm fine. Well, he did have a stroke. Whoa. And, and they took him out in a stretcher. Okay. Then a couple of weeks later, I get a call from Joan. And she says, oh, Jay, Rodney's in the coma. You got to come out to the hospital. Oh. All right. So I go out to the hospital. And Rodney's lying there with his eyes open. And Joan says, uh, listen, he can hear us. The doctor says he can hear us, but he can't respond. So I'm telling him how much we love him and yeah, you know, how great he mm-hmm. was to all his comics and letting us work his club and all this kind of stuff. So then Joan says to me, Jay, put your finger in Rodney's hand. She goes, Rodney, if you know it's Jay, try and squeeze his finger. So I feel just a hint of a squeeze. And I went, Rodney, that's not my finger. <laughs> right? So then, so, so Rodney's shoulders go like this. And John goes, he moved, he moved, out! and we all started laughing. And oh, I, and, that's funny. Yeah, and his shoulders he, went up. He, he died right after that. But it was, mm. I mean, just to get a laugh from Rodney, yeah, you know, just to get a reaction from him was, uh, yeah, it was pretty he's cool. So, he's so sweet. I met him in New York. I was nobody. I hadn't even done the Mickey Rooney show. Sure. Hey, you having fun? Are you having fun? Sure. Are you having fun? You know, just so you get to the mid fifties, you're like, you, you got to have some fun at this. You can't just be tortured the whole time. Oh, I remember my wife and I lived in the storeroom. At Dangerfields, well, all the cans of what you lived in the store. Well, for two, I was I was there for two weeks, so we that's where we stayed because we couldn't afford a hotel. Stay here, yeah, yeah, so literally here. Lived in the store. <laughs> it's, 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 yeah. I like he's the only guy like started wearing a robe at forty nine and just never went back to clothes. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Everyone yeah. visits him. He's like he's wearing a robe. <laughs> I know, and it's always open. Rodney, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hey, he called me. He wanted to do the church lady. Oh, come on! You know, I think it was Ladybug or some movie he was doing. Oh, Ladybug! Oh, come on! You you give me a lot of stuff. I'll come back at you. Anyways, oh, oh, when did you come on and do the church lady in the movie? No, no, on SNL. Oh, to well, he was the, the only guy to fire comedian from his special because they weren't dirty enough. <laughs> 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 when, and his old, he said, "You're too clean. You got to dirty it up a little bit." The comics, said, I don't have any dirty stuff. All right, you're on. He was. Uh, he had the old specials for people listening that uh, were very big, and they'd have big. Co- they'd have comics on that were up and coming, right? Yeah, yeah. Kinnison, Saget, uh, right? Yeah, yeah. A lot of people, and they, they all. A lot of them blew up from yeah. that. Yeah, because that was did. the only game in town. Kinnison was a pretty remarkable. Character you know, to arrive great on great comic, yeah. truly an original. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Hard to do. One of the meanest guys around. I mean, really pretty nasty. Mm. To, if you got along with him, it was okay. If you're an enemy, boy, it was, uh, yeah, I would just hear stories and, mm. you know, you know, he, and he would come to the comedy store with Coke and a gun. And I remember being <laughs> backstage and going, you know, I don't want to be here when the cops come. I'm a comic. I'm. I don't want to get arrested, you know. So I just stopped going to the comedy store because he was a bit like that. What What is that animal that the horns grow when they curve and they grow into your own head and they drive you crazy, you know? Mm-hmm. Because he was. I mean, once you he had that hilarious bit on necrophilia, 
But after you do yeah. that, where do you, what's where, your next where do you go? Where do you yeah. go, you know? Yeah. I mean, he was generally really funny. And, and that primal scream he would give so out. Good. Was, ah, ah, like the I, Wicked Witch or something. Oh, yeah, but ah. I mean, but it, but it really came from a frightening play. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, if you do yeah. it, it wow. it's a funny scream. This is like, oh, my God. It was almost. You no, know, and then he would follow with the cackle. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. know why there's no God? And you take off his beret and he's bald. Da, ha, ha, and he's screaming and he's pointing at his head. Right? He was a yeah. preacher from he Oklahoma. He was a preacher, but mm -hmm. he, was, he was really funny, but really dark. Burned out quickly, yeah. Here's yeah. A th I would like your opinion on, speaking of great comics, was Rickles in a way the funniest guest to have on The Tonight Show? Is he funny with you? Don Rickles. Rickles was obviously Rickles is he, great. But he, the what, trouble near the end was. Well, near the end. We yeah. had to edit. Well, not the last couple. We had mm -hmm. to edit it because he would come out and he'd look at the man and go, and Kevin stealing the hubcaps, you know. And yeah. the oh, band, he's still, still he's doing still, that. Yeah. yeah. And the oh. band was mostly black, you know. <laughs> well, that's and, not they would, work. and they would just go. I mean, Kevin didn't go along with this at all. Mm -hmm. He was just like, yeah. So we have to kind of edit oh. it. Yeah. So there was a lot of that, you know, and a black guy and a white guy. And, yeah. In his act. I, I just liked his stuff that was no real joke. Ed does another show start. Give him a cookie and put him in the corner. Right, right. You know, give him a cookie, put him in the corner. Right. It's like, what, what was a joke? It's well, to me, weird. the funny part was, <laughs> funny that, rhythm, that was yeah. something I learned. You can't swear on TV, so come up with something that's funnier than a mm -hmm. swear word. Yeah. Like, I remember on Letterman, I would say, uh, David, go to the... I remember doing a thing about going to the carnival and there'd be some sort of shirtless, syphilitic druid running... And Dave would go... Shirtless, syphilitic druid. That's right, <laughs> David. And the druids, are they in? Oh, yeah, they're all. They're, right. they're all they're, and, and we go off on a tangent, and we'd have a lot of funny material. But it, it, rather than just calling somebody an asshole, mm -hmm. come up with a funnier word. I, I was never offended by obscenity in comics. I'm just, you got something more creative? I mean, got something else? I mean, it's, it's not a punchline, but a lot of people just use it as a punchline. Well, I, tell, I see young comedians and they're using, because we're, we're PG-13, they're yeah. using fuck a lot, not even as a punchline. Yeah. And and I said, and then they get to a joke and that is the punchline. So you've already used up all the fucks. You can't, you well, got to save new, them at least. It's hard to follow. Newhart came in to uh, see somebody at a comedy store, another up and coming person who became quite famous. And I, I'm, I'm sitting there with him, you know, and the guy goes out, and this guy, whoo, huge applause comes out on stage. He goes, where are you from? Guy goes, Denver. Fuck Denver. Whoo, huge laugh. <laughs> <laughs> right. And Bob Newhart looks at me straight face. I don't get it. I don't get it. <laughs> I don't and get where it. are you from? Boston. <laughs> Fuck Boston. <laughs> woo, woo. People laugh. He goes, I don't. I, I don't. I don't get it. You know. Well, it's only funny that it, it's so bad. <laughs> it's like that's his yeah. act. <laughs> he was the funniest to me. New I remember one of my favorite lines when I was a kid. He had a bit about um, the first astronaut to make uh, extraterrestrial contact mm -hmm. in space mm -hmm. with an alien. Yeah, you know. So uh, he does the whole thing about the astronaut land. There's a press conference. And mm -hmm. Someone says it's halting uh, delivery. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Someone yeah. says. Uh, how far ahead of us? How far ahead of us are these aliens? And who goes? Um, about six weeks. <laughs> <laughs> and you realize it's the perfect because two weeks you can catch up to. Six months we'll never get here. But six weeks, oh, yeah. it's never Maybe quite a ten. Yeah. But you know, you're just it just so it was just so subtle. It's just like a slider. It's just a uh, slider. How far ahead of us? Uh, about six weeks. And I think Ellen was the really influenced by that when she's she had a talk to God. Yeah, a bit that was brilliant and yeah. like five minutes long, and yeah, Newhart yeah. would get on the phone and do yeah, King Kong. Yeah, he's a rather large monkey, whatever. And it, right, right. It was yeah. just and Ellen had sort of a stammer so too. She would, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, think has it. Yeah, so it feels like it's spontaneous. I remember bringing Johnny in to see Ellen because I had told her about him. He said, "I'll come down." So he came down the, uh, down to the Improv and watched her and liked it. Yeah. Johnny came down. Yeah, yeah. I, I saw here it says Johnny's Steve Martin. so mysterious. Like the idea of Johnny out in public because he was. Yeah, just... Johnny Cars. I read this said Steve Martin was the first one to introduce Johnny to Jay at one of your gigs. So I couldn't believe a Steve Martin's involved and Johnny came to the clubs. I didn't even think of that. Oh, he did. Yeah, I remember Altman used to do Carson. Uh, oh, Jeff Altman. Yeah, and Great. so Johnny came down the comedy store and snuck around back. Well, almost you? on stage, he went on stage and tapped him on the shoulder and. Altman turned around. <laughs> I mean, he was like, am I, am I going to get fired? Will I never get the show? I mean, he, he looked like frightened to death. Sure. I mean, it was hilarious. It was hilarious. Yeah, no, Johnny, it, Johnny liked comics. 
He yeah. really liked comics a lot. You know, uh, didn't like Bob Hope. He would always rail on Bob Hilarious. Hope. Well, because Bob Hope never accepted the that Johnny had the throne at some point. Like no, would, it wasn't that. It was the fact that Johnny hated the fact that every joke Bob Hope had was written. Right. That he never ad-libbed anything. I'll tell you a funny Bob Hope story. I had him on the show. He was close to 100. Mm -hmm. And he wouldn't wear his hearing aids. He wouldn't wear glasses. Yeah. Okay, so... They, he goes, I got 10 jokes, Jay. Uh, you just ask me and I'll give you the answer. Okay. <laughs> sure. uh, he said, he, but he couldn't hear him. He just had the punchline memorized. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have Bob, Bob, <laughs> hey, Bob, what do you think of Salazar? Blah, blah, big laugh. I go, the sound is working. Hey, uh, Bob, how about Salazar? Blah, blah, big laugh. Blah, blah. I get to the third <clears throat> one and I, and I went, oh man, that was funny. Blah, blah. <laughs> okay, now we. <laughs> he's done the punchline to the next. The he's done the punchline to the next joke. The next joke, so Before, it comes uh, off like oh, he's. Oh, oh yeah. Senile. Now you're one behind. <laughs> yeah, so we had to ed just edit because we're mm. one behind. I remember once uh, being in the hall at NBC, and I see these guys walk by with a cue card, literally the size of your backdrop, with "hello" written on it. And because Bob Hope couldn't see. But <laughs> what happened was they would drop the cue cards right in front of Bob and his hair would go. Whoo, whoo. So every time he told the joke, you'd see his hair move because <laughs> the cue card came down and the wind would go. Because the car was like a giant fan. It was right. so it, huge. It, yeah, yeah, it was, yeah it was, it's really funny. Yeah. When you hosted SNL, the, you, you probably could have done it any time, but it says you did it in 86. Was it a fun experience or just something to do, right? I liked it. I was intense. amazed how unsupportive other writers were. Like, I remember being in the rehearsal and I said to somebody, Damn, it didn't get me laughs. I think, oh no, the writers don't laugh at the other guy's stuff. I go, really? I, that just seemed, it seemed really competitive. Yeah, especially. Uh, I, I mean, to the point of pitting one. I mean, I learned that when I, when I hired writers on my show, I just said, look, you're hired for a year. Don't worry about 13. We just, just write whatever you want, okay? And give it to me, and I'll, I'll try to make a joke out of it. We'll figure it out. You know, so I, you have five guys write essentially the same joke, and each one thought they did the punchline, you know? Yeah. And, and it just made more comfortable. Everybody wasn't on pins and needles. Hmm. I just remember being in that. It seemed like such a pressure cooker. That, well, you did it. You know. What I, I did it. Dana, 86, were you there, or you came right after You that? were, I came fall of 86. You went on and. Yeah. February 86. So you were at the, the cast the year before with Randy Quaid and this and that. It was kind of a yeah, I guess difficult right. year. But yeah. yeah, it's a Game of Thrones thing. If you're all around a table, if it's in comedy and stand up, you're going to get your set. Your friend gets his set. But sometimes your friend's skit goes on and they have no yeah. room for yours. It's inherently a very bizarre situation. Right, right. But the idea that I wouldn't laugh at your joke because it's, you know, it's like I see that now. It's why I took politics out of my act. Because you do a mm -hmm. Biden joke, and they wait oh. for the punch. Is this pro or against? Oh, it's against Biden. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Oh, okay, they wait to hear mm. which way the joke is going. So I I said, it's well, tricky. I, I, I just, so now I just, just try to make it so silly that they, there's no proof. Right, exactly. That's and the he did that really the pirates, well. The, the, the pirate, pirate, pirates of Caribbean. <laughs> you know, like you just. <laughs> right. I think now they just either take attack against. Trump and it's a little easier to go because Trump was getting laughs just while he's running. It's well, just, Trump supporters own... know he's funny. Yeah. And a little unhinged. He's, I mean, and he, he's just funny. You used to be able to say, you hear Trump today and they start laughing. So right. once that got hooked in, some just gave up on the other side. Just said, if I can just make fun of this guy, it's just always going to get laughs. Right. And then they don't play it as equal as you used to do, or even Johnny, you know, it was, it was well, really- Well, it's so funny, we used to get- There's no venom. We used to get kudos that. because you made fun of both sides equal. Yeah, that's right. Now you get attacked because, uh, hey, pick a side, you know. <laughs> well, no, that's not my job. Here, let me do yeah. it that my Trump I do now for you, because yeah. it'll yeah. be like going back in time. Yeah. This would be the bit, that would be on right. your card. Right. So trying to ride the middle, <clears throat> Trump always sounds like he's uh, pitching a family vacation. Okay. We're going to be doing a lot of things. Let me tell you, we're going to be going <laughs> a lot of places. You're going to like it. You're going to love it. Many people don't want to go, but we're going to go anyway because <laughs> we don't know how to go and we can do it all the time. <laughs> and so that would be an example of just anyone who likes Trump or hates Trump would just knows that's funny. Just sounds right? like him. Because he, he, he never ends, he doesn't have a subject matter. It's all just... He can just keep going. Yeah, I, I, I do great. the same thing. When, like I said, there's this thing. 
I saw this political science professor on the news. He said he'd analyzed all of Donald Trump's speeches, and he said Donald Trump talked at a fifth grade level or below. And when the, they told Trump this, he called the professor a duty head. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's such a silly, stupid joke. Same I think thing. it's a little easier. My observation, conservatives maybe not are as serious and people, my oh, friends- Oh, conservatives are very, uh, uh, laugh at themselves more than uh, oh, Democrats. Yeah. It's all very, hey, wait a minute, you know, you, you, wh why are you making fun of him? He's the, I, no, I'm on your side. Don't yeah. worry about it. Just, just I would do George W. Yeah. Bush in Texas and they would be laughing their ass off, yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, but it's fun to try to make the liberals laugh yeah. when it, they can't not laugh. Right, right. Like, you know, I wanted to ask uh, Jay about the, uh, not to interrupt you, Dana, the, uh, not when you, we were talking done. about panel just a second ago because you were saying that's a bit- I think people at home don't know what a how hard it is to go on a talk show. It's called panel when you sit and talk to the host right. or how it's a little bit constructed and they think everyone just walks out and just starts talking. Right. I know. I and know. it's supposed to look like that. And that's, I think everyone is still bluffed that it is like that. You should have my uncle on. He's really funny. Yeah. What does he do? He's really, just have him on. Oh, yeah. No, just I'm not going to put your on. uncle on. <laughs> what does he do? No, it's really good. And they never, they never tell you what. Because don't you run into problems with... I probably bigger stars that just say, Hey, I, I'm thinking of a few names I won't say, but they don't do a pre interview, but they're going to be great. Right. And it's yeah. always tough, right? Yeah, Isn't they it? never are. Yeah. yeah you they, just never know what you're getting. And I think people at home go, Oh, this guy's a superstar, but to extract, and it's always, uh, unfortunately, it leans toward comedy. Like they, they, they like a funny story. Of course, they like it lighter and this and that. Usually they plug a movie, they have to talk about the movie. And, that sort of flatline. So I always like it when they write it out first and then memorize it. And you can tell it's written. So oh. I exclaimed. Okay, now, first of all, you don't exclaim. Nobody, <laughs> nobody <laughs> exclaims. <laughs> yeah, no, but I mean, they write it yeah, out and funny. then they, they memorize it as yeah. it's written, mm -hmm. you know. You remember the time, I think it was Joaquin Phoenix, who I love. I think it was him. He's, was he telling you a story about he, his motorcycle broke down or was it Keanu or somebody? It was and, Keanu, I think, yeah. And then he goes, I, I broke down and this, and you go, did you ever go back and get it? And he goes, I don't know, Jay. And you go, did this happen to you? And he goes, no, it's my <laughs> friend's story. He told me, that. he tried to act like it was his story, but he goes, I didn't know what to talk about here. And <clears throat> But that sort of let people in on- Oh, it. I had Joaquin Phoenix on the show. It was a pain in the ass. Um he was into that cool air, performance. That oh, he's doing, I think, back then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that. I, at the end of the show, I said, well, listen, uh, uh, good seeing you. I hope you can come back sometime and do it in person, you know? <laughs> do it and, in person. You know, so his his <laughs> manager or somebody, he is a genius to understand. You don't break. I said, it's a joke. He, I said, well, don't come back. I don't care. He, he was terrible. He didn't try. He was too cool for the room. You always get that. That's my favorite guest to go. Listen, I have to leave after my... <laughs> yeah, yeah they can't okay. spare 20 minutes. Okay, so got, they leave. And then I come off, and they're still backstage talking in the hall. I said, you know, you could have been out there mm -hmm. interacting with Helping. the other guests. Mm -hmm. Well, my manager said it's better if it looks, <sighs> people think you have somewhere to go. All, all right. And I just felt it was rude to go on and not be prepared. I, I know, yeah. And yeah. you would always thank me, and I made me think, well, isn't everyone doing this? You go, no, yeah, thanks not. for pre preparing. <laughs> you know? Yeah, no, most Everything matters. Are. Steve Martin said, I, I used to watch Steve Martin oh, yeah. and say, Works on it, Martin Short works on it. it just it, You just go, everything's an audition. Some people might have seen me for the very first time I go on your show. Yeah. And if you don't bring something, if you're sort of riding on your last movie, they'll go, this guy's not funny. Yeah, that's what I always, I, a lot of times I'll go to flappers and I'll talk to comics and they'll go, I've never done the same set twice. I pride myself. Jesus. Well, that's why it's not really that funny. It's not I working. Mean, it's a matter of just <laughs> paring it down. It's... It, it, it's Groundhog Day. You keep getting the best version of it mm. that you can. Make it tighter and tighter. You, do you have bits for that live for a while, and then all of a sudden you think of two more tags, and then you do the bit. To me, it becomes very new if yeah. you just add something. Yeah. Right, you know? right. Yeah. It's like oh, this they feels, expand. Feels, yeah, feels yeah, brand new. Exactly. You know, exactly, yeah. I tell more stories because there's, in my case, uh, I'm not the most innovative comedian. Oh, yes, you are. Um, that, that when you do stories about your life or yourself, it's less e it's, it's harder to sound like someone else. So yeah, and nobody else can steal it. Yeah. And you're just doing like, this is my interpretation of, but even if I did Dennis Miller did a Seven Eleven joke. And when I started, they're like, don't do jokes about Jeopardy or Seven Eleven or McDonald's. <laughs> and I go, well, if you're doing the same joke, don't, but like Dennis has right. his angle on it and it's right. funny. And then if you put your spin 
it seems to be, it still works to me because they're common denominators. That's the people forget. That's why they do those jokes. I did a Jeopardy bit. And when I used to do props like uh, this, this hack over here, Dana, um, you were a big prop act. <laughs> oh, I had, I had a trunk. <laughs> I, had a, I had a suitcase. And so I had a mini xylophone, right? Like a kid's one. Right. Carted that fucking thing through JFK just to go with a little stick. Jeopardy. Hey, and they answer the question. Then I go, bing, 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 bing. And I go, bing. Bing, 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 bing. Okay, pens down. Couldn't you just do it with your mouth? Then eventually yeah, you just, I, yeah. eventually I just <laughs> said that. Well, you know, that's why I travel alone because that's why funny stuff comes, mm -hmm. you know. Because I, you're forced to Yeah, interact. I mean, I was in Hamilton. Have you played up there in Canada? Probably. Oh, okay. Hamilton, Hamilton well, played outside theater. of Ontario? Yeah. 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 So I mean, I, of that I'm, I'm in a, a hotel that's on the highway. It's real now. I don't have a mm -hmm. rental car. And across the street is like a little mini mall so I said, i'll walk over the mini mall and it's like a dollar store gather and jokes if you're thinking that yeah so i'm sitting there so i i go in this cafeteria place and i'm on the hamburger and i see this guy looking at me you know guy about 26 27 he goes hey are you that uh, jane leno fellow there <laughs> uh, yeah 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 hey, are you, hey can i talk to you uh yeah yeah come and sit down so i'm talking to him he says uh and he's him and i don't even want to ask me something i go well what do you want he goes Hey, uh, you know when you watch uh, those Prell commercials on TV, you know, you see those commercials with girls taking a shower? I said, yeah. He goes, uh, do they have any clothes on those commercials? And I said, <laughs> so I said, uh, well, you know, my friend, that's what he does. He shoots those commercials. And no, legally, you can't say you're taking a shower and have clothes on because they could sue you. So they have to be naked when they do the commercials. He goes, oh, Oh, really? Yeah, is that right? And I, he's, he's this guy getting all worked up over these pro commercials. You know? I said, oh, yeah, yeah. In fact, my friend must, he probably auditions 10, 15 girls a day, and he has to watch them take a shower. And he's going, oh, wait, that must, <laughs> hey, that must be quite a job. Yeah, I go, yeah, but I mean, he takes these, he, there's no fooling around. No, he goes, no, I wouldn't, I would, I would be very serious. I said, I'd oh, be yeah, very yeah. serious. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that was his show business question. I like, I also a Prell commercial of all things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Prell. Canadians. Not even a good shampoo. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even like an upper. I was into yeah. Prell for Here's a hell later. gig that involves Canada. So I'm flying to Seattle to play Comedy Underground. They meet me at the airport and I go, oh, you're not playing Comedy Underground tonight. You're playing Kelowna, Canada. And I had like three hops to Kelowna. So then I'm playing a disco. Right. And they're all dancing, the lights and everything. Then they throw me on the disco floor. <laughs> Just death. Horrifying. Dead silence. Wait, you remember when you and I did the wedding? Oh, oh God, that was, oh, let's talk about that next. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, when I got out, a guy felt sorry for me. This Canadian guy says, hey, uh, next time you're here, you know, do it about when guys come in out of the bathroom with wet stains on their trousers, that always gets them. <laughs> that was his advice. <laughs> so anyway, Jay and I played a millionaire's wedding. Yeah, w with Rod Stewart. Who got a million to close, at least if I got that right. Something like that. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. But it was, uh, well, how would you describe it? A Fellini film. Well, first film. of all, it's just people eating. Mm. It's a wedding. Everybody's talking. Uh, I go on. Bomb. Just I've bomb. never seen it. But the audience is like 100 feet away Yeah, yeah well. but they're not even, it's all. <laughs> they're not even looking. It's a lot of this. <laughs> yeah. you know, so, so they're, they're not even you. looking at you. It's so they go, uh, Dana yeah. Carvey. Go, well, Dana will kill. I pick a, no. and, and then you, you didn't do that well either. No, no, no. <laughs> I bombed. Jay. And then Rob <laughs> Stewart. Nice. Do you think I'm sexy? Everyone's still talking. I mean, just unbelievable. They couldn't. They never even looked up. They never applauded. Oh, oh well, I walked in. I think it was David Crosby with a guitar in the foyer singing uh, Crosby Hills and Nash hits, and people are walking in front, just ignoring him. <laughs> yeah, talking right old man. back to him, having a drink. Who's oh, that yeah, guy? It's just so hard. Yeah, well, corporate gigs are the funniest because you're getting paid to bomb, basically. Right. And Not they try. Always, they try their best. They, sometimes they say, "But I think there's these people that make ton of money. Then they're the CEO, and then they look around and they say, Leno or Carvey is my favorite comic. I'm the boss now." I can have them just come to our show and that's such a power move. I think it's fun for them and they get to meet you and uh, take fine a picture. With me. It's fine with me. Sometimes they're actually really good. I, you might find this funny, Jay. It must have happened to you, but what? sometimes they, they want the entrance to be exciting in a mm -hmm. corporate date. Yeah. And I always tell them, only buys me seven seconds. Right. So it's yeah. a car thing. We're going to put you in the go-kart. Yeah. You're going to drive them on the stage or they're going to drop you in with a harness. So have you had any of those? Where I they just, just they, you the can't just show. walk to well, the mic. I like it when they think they know, here's what you go out, you tell like two jokes, and then you talk about the company for a little bit and explain what we do. And then 
you know, go back and do it. I go, well, no, let me just do the joke. Oh, no, no, I got, no, guys, <laughs> it's a deal breaker. Uh, okay, you don't go, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Frank Sinatra. And then he talks. <laughs> they don't want to hear him sing. Yeah. <clears throat> and that's mm -hmm. what it is, you know? Mm -hmm. you, can't, you can't do that. I, I just get a lot of those. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's hard to incorporate. They think it's easy. If you could do about 10 or 15 just about our company. I'm like 10 or 15 minutes? About your boring yeah, company? Right, exactly. I don't know anyone here. I don't know how it works. I don't know. I'll, I'll tell you a great story. I had a guy on the show. <laughs> he was the, the first blind person to climb Mount Everest. Mm. This guy was in incredible shape, but he's, he's blind. And he, you know. Okay, it sounds like a joke coming up. <laughs> no, no, this is a real thing. So he comes on and he does, and he's very good, you know. Mm -hmm. So he says, uh, you doing a lot of uh, motivational speaking? Is that? He goes, yeah, yeah. I go, well, that's pretty good money. And he goes, yeah, but I tell you, I, I hate to go, I go why? He goes, because he goes to these things, you know, and he does the whole thing about clanging on the, clinging on them. He's holding on to a, an icy rock. He doesn't know if it's day or night. Sleet is hitting him. It <laughs> takes him like three months to go step by step. And he says, inevitably, when he does the meet and greet, people come up and they shake his hand. They go, you know, I was going to climb Everest last summer, but, you know, the kids got soccer and the wife's got things to do. But, yeah, I'm going to do it one of these days. And he's like, fuck you. He's just <laughs> seething with rage. <laughs> <laughs> he's clinging on to this mountain. He can be barely alive. Three months. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just, and then people just take it for granted. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna, I was, you know, I was going to do Everest, but... Uh, we almost get that too. People go, you know, I was, I was going to do comedy for a while, but then I decided I want to get into a vacuum sales. You know, oh, okay, yeah. great. You know, <laughs> how do you, yeah, how do you come up with that that, uh, that Saturday Night Live stuff? That must be a kick, right? You know, all <laughs> these vague questions. How do you, how yeah. Do you yeah, yeah, yeah. What's that like? You know? So what's the funniest thing yeah. you've ever said? Do you hate right. Tell me the funniest thing. Well, no, okay, right away, <laughs> you, you, you're dead. There's nothing. Dead. Nothing's going to be funny. Hey, or this one. I don't know if you can use this. It's like, it's like a nine-minute wind up to a joke. Yeah, and it's like a... a a hugely racist piece yeah, of it. Yeah, always. <laughs> or I, do you, I bet you hate when people come up and talk to you. And I'm like, well, I'm not going to tell you that, but I'll tell the next person about yeah, you. Yeah, Bert yeah. Burt Lancaster tried to give me a joke once. Really? He's doing a movie with him. I don't know if he can use it. I'll just do a little bit of the voice. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So this, uh, this uh, football player is not too good at grades, right? So he goes to the principal's office. Not too good at grades. Yeah. Uh -huh. And they're going to give him a test. So the principal goes, I'll give you a test, see if you're smart enough to play football. Uh, he says three plus two, and then the dumb guy says five, and the coach goes, "Give him another try." <laughs> Does it make sense? I the coach is dumber than the player. Yeah, the coach is dumber than the player. Right. <laughs> so I, I, I lost Bert at the end. I give him another try. <laughs> we have an older demographic. Does that work in your act? Uh, no, Kirk Douglas stole it. Jay, how many times a day do you post a TikTok? <clears throat> I don't. I don't okay. post any. You know, some I don't I post was it guessing all that anymore. Answer. I don't even do Twitter. I told one joke on Twitter. <laughs> and somebody thought it was funny. The joke was uh, <laughs> when I had my motorcycle accident, you know, yeah. I said, what happened? I was riding my bike. I came around the corner and I slammed into Jeremy Renner's snowmobile, snowmobile <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. and, and it got a big laugh. And, and then I, I, I you know, you, you know when you when you Google you, you whenever you're mentioned, mm -hmm. yeah, it comes and around. I see Leno makes fun of Renner's accident. Leno laughs at the pain. Yeah. No, I didn't. No, I never. Even, I, I said I I, I crashed into a snowmobile. You know. Yeah. And it, it just and then I'm. It's people, a tough world out there. Leno should apologize. Oh, shut up, Jesus! Did you see any jokes ab about your accident that you thought were funny? Oh, yeah. There's and you of, wouldn't be offended. You'd be like, yeah, no, there's I think comedy. they're really fine. In fact, yeah. I called Jeremy Renner's people and they were fine. They said, yeah, he's got a great sense of humor. Yeah, yeah. Does, yeah exactly, exactly. I actually, I barely know Jeremy Renner. So I said, uh, I hope, you know, just sending, it was, it was terrible. Right when it happened, you're like, holy shit, I hope he pulls out of this. This is, right. you wouldn't wish that on anybody. And then about, and then when he said he, he's doing okay and it'll be all right, you know, probably underplay uh, the severity, but. I think I knew him barely enough that I had a picture of a snow cone at dinner and I was buzzed and I said, hey, can you get this thing out of this? I don't know. It was something about a snow, snow cone. Yeah, I had a snow cone and they brought me a <laughs> dessert and then I did some joke and sent it to him. Anyway, it went over. So okay. he got, he's in the hospital bed. He gets a picture of a snow cone from David Spade and the byline is. And I DM'd him in and I What was the joke? I said, I, can you, uh, <laughs> can you uh, get rid of this for me or. Something about a snow, something. <laughs> anyway, it was really yeah, well yeah. written and tight. And then, um, yeah, yeah. And then well, uh, we have G. Uh, we I, have Jeremy Renner on the and line. Then when right he now. was offended, I said, "I heard what Jay said. That was shitty, dude." Yeah. 
I switched oh. it back to Jay real yeah. quick. People are too sensitive. But now- No, he was very cool about it. Just, just the long story is I can't write a joke and uh, <laughs> let's move on. Social media. So I get these new agents. I go into the inner sanctum like Ned Beatty and Network. Right. <laughs> and he says, it's all social media. It's all direct to consumer. And there's comedians outside the lines. There's no NBC sitcom. There's no Tonight yeah. Show. There's nothing. They're creating their own ecosystem. They're making, doing giant mm. specials and they're playing all over the world. So that's this new, new, new thing. You don't need it because you're Jay Leno. Yeah. <clears throat> you don't need it because you're Dana Carvey. I like well, write joke, tell joke, get check. It's yeah. real simple. And I said to myself, you know, they they offer you the specials. I could go, okay, I could work 10 gigs, 20 gigs, and make the same money and still own the material. Because mm -hmm. once you put it out there, it, it's gone. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and when you show clips of it on video, that's the under 40 crowd, is that that's all they pass around and people send me little clips. 20, 25 second clips. So you go to the ice house, you have get a camera, you do your set, then you just get clips out. Right. And a lot of Instagram people, a lot of people are doing stand up as a fetish, as a part of their brand. So they'll do a little stand up, they'll do the 20 second clips, can almost, anyone can kill for 20 seconds. Yeah. And then, so it's, it's not grumpy old man stuff, it's just this is what's, the technology yeah. has. And you also has, burn material. So now a new thing is they do crowd work, which doesn't help you when you go to a real show because right. you don't want interaction. Usually most comics want to do their act. And when they're sort of making it okay to do crowd work, because that's something that just happened when they film an hour set, they go in the crowd. If they get one thing that works, they post it. But then when people come see them, they start interrupting them. And yeah, yeah. that's tough because you don't want to burn a real joke. So you happen to come up with something for the crowd and right. then post it. Mm -hmm. I don't have jokes. I don't have you guys. I can do Fauci and just sort of go for 10 minutes. Yeah, so right. it's a little yeah, different. Yeah. I don't, I can't write jokes. Take a new shot every I'm hour. terrible at jokes, but on bumps. I had one, yeah. I did one when I was 27. I go, hi everybody. I'm 27, but I read at a 29 year old level. Right. Killed. Right. That's I right. met my wife at, at 19. I raised her as one of my own. Right. Boom, but right. I, that's about all I got you. Those are jokes, yeah, set up joke. But I, I admire joke <clears throat> joke writers that can come up with that, their brain. And Dennis Miller is It is, is funny when you write one. it. I mean, here's a joke I, that I've been doing. I love this joke. I said, I go to Best Buy looking for a washer and dryer, right? <laughs> the guy goes, let me show you a new line of smart washers and dryers. I go, wait, what makes them smart? He goes, I got Wi-Fi. I said, you know, I don't need Wi-Fi in my washer and dryer. Guy, okay, because it's value added. It's included in the price. When you buy the top of the line model, you get the Wi-Fi for free. I said, oh, fine. So I buy the washer and dryer with Wi-Fi. For the last two weeks, I walk around with damp underwear because I forgot my password. <laughs> <laughs> and that gets a, you know, yeah. and it's a joke that works across every yeah. age group. Across, yeah. Because young people, you know, if you're under 40, they get it. you get the connection with yeah. the computer and you got to, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, it's just, it just works. It's just, yeah. it's fun when you have a joke that works across the board. Yeah. yeah. And works every time. Yeah. yeah and it's pretty clean. Much, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You can do it anywhere. You know? Yeah. Because it's amazing. The two Americas always amazes me. Yeah, we Because I go to places and I meet people. I go, boy, this is a Trump crowd. But I like these people. You know, mm -hmm. the blue collar, the, you know, they they work hard. They got families, they're mm -hmm. happily married. And I, I mean, I like, you know, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't gamble. I'm pretty conservative mm -hmm. that way. Mm -hmm. So I identify with that part of it. I might not identify with the political part or mm -hmm. even the religious part. But so I just keep it down the middle. And- this way you make money from both sides. You know? yeah. yeah, I feel like I can play to any crowd. Oh, you can I play. I, you you know. play any. You and I pass each other constantly on the road. Yeah. Either you were just there yeah. or you're mm -hmm. just coming here. Yeah, yeah. One of this backstage person said to me, uh, well, I, mean, I don't know, right before the pandemic, she talked about you specifically, how relaxed you were. And she said, he's one of the most confident people I've ever met. Oh. Yeah. I think because you're so in shape, you're never not in shape as a performer, because yeah. I remember even as a young performer and I would open for you and you'd just be in a chair by the stage. And a lot of, in those days you had a pipe. Oh yeah. You know? yeah that's a and you're just ago. like so relaxed because <clears throat> you've been on stage, you've been doing your act, you're, you know. And you then I come off stage and you just said to me, and you were right, you said, you're gonna need some more jokes because I didn't have any jokes. I was more of a sketch player right, organically. Right, right. Um, then I got on Saturday Night Live and I, the rest is history. <laughs> yeah, right. Do you but, use a set list? You never do, do you? No, I don't have anything. I'm dyslexic, so I don't have anything written down. Jesus, it's hard to remember a whole hour. Well, I don't know. I, I, 
if something gets a laugh, I just remember it, and it, yeah, it, it just. Bill Burr doesn't write anything down. He said he just he goes out every night and he's hitting three stages. And yeah, just, but that's what I mean. To me, because you know, the practice. stage is not a normal place to be. Okay, and if you're not on stage for two weeks, it's like that's true. Well, this is what you, you, you're tripping over your work. I mean, it should yeah. be second nature. Yeah. I mean, what I used to do, and I still do it sometimes. I'll try to write a letter with my hand while I'm doing my act, not in front of an audience, but to see if I can compartmentalize. And so that way I can, I can be thinking of what I'm going to say to the, you know, the guy that's heckling me while I'm doing my act. Because you know, it's, you could, it's like doing mm -hmm. the Pledge of Allegiance, Pledge of Allegiance to the United States of America, and you can do something while you're saying that because it's mm -hmm. a part yeah, of- you know we, it so well. Yeah, yeah, and the same thing with, with comedy. So if I can write a letter with this hand while I'm doing my act, it's just a good way to practice. It. Yeah, you're right. You do have to desensitize to the whole concept. Yeah, of, yeah. Here he is and be funny now and yeah, everyone's yeah. looking at you. This yeah. is kind of out of nowhere, but did, did you ever meet like early SNL people like Belushi or Gilda? Yeah, I, met, I picked Belushi up at the airport. He, but on Saturday Night Live, I went with Bud Friedman. He was coming to mm -hmm. the improv. Oh, uh, yeah. I didn't know him that well. I just, mm -hmm. you know, he was like a crazy, you know, just you know, drugs. <laughs> I just wasn't that guy, you know, but yeah. I mean, I, I certainly liked him and admired him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Must yeah. have been huge at that point. Oh, yeah, yeah. He got big fast. That was the first year, yeah, yeah. And you played all the clubs. In LA, for our fans out there, it was the Comedy Store, it was Coke and Pepsi in a way, and then it was the Improv. Mm -hmm. right. Laugh Factory came in later. Yeah. Right. And you played everywhere, of course. Yeah, I did all of I painted the roof of the Improv when I bought the building. Who's store? You lived in a storage room and you painted a roof. Yeah. I mean, you were busy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I always tell this story. I've been telling it lately about when I first came to LA, I would live in open houses. I'd go to an open house. You'd see like open house uh, 12 <laughs> to 4. So I'd go at 3.30. I'd walk through the house. i go, thank you. Goodbye. I'd slam the front door. Then I'd duck in the closet, you know. And then the realtor would stick around for another 20 minutes, lock up and leave. This is before cars, houses had alarms. That's unbelievable. Right. You know? So, and I would just live in the house for two or three days. And one day I was, I was, I, one of the houses <laughs> belonged. clever. <laughs> you know, one of the houses belonged to one of the Beach Boys. It was on cold water. Can I'm sleeping, you know? And I hear the realtor, now this is the bedroom. <laughs> and I was sleeping in the bed and this woman screams, you know, mommy, there's a kid in the Get the children out of here. She goes, what are you doing here? I, I'm sorry. Get out, get out. That's the only time I got caught. But I lived at houses on Outpost in Bel Air. I don't try and find, and I never stole anything or damaged anything. I always made the bed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just didn't have any place to live. So well, I did I come in full circle. I like Chris Rock's line. You know, I go, I make millions, but I identify as poor. Right. Yeah, and yeah. you, it seems like, mm -hmm. I mean, when was, do you remember the first time you made a million dollars? Because I remember you started to explode as a stand-up yeah. in the mid '80s or something from from your Letterman shots, probably. Yeah, yeah. Probably and so that, you yeah. were doing, you were really yeah, doing yeah. well. We don't have to give the numbers, but you started to really get no, no, wealthy yeah, it was, it was, at it was, that point. It was doing good. Yeah. yeah. It was, it was First good. million is a big, big deal. It is a big deal. Feels like you're doing something. Feels like okay, I, I can do this no, you, job. You are doing something. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It didn't come easy. Huh? It does not. It, no, and I stand up when I think about unless you're a savant, maybe like Eddie Murphy. For the rest of us, and even Louis C.K., it took twenty years really to become Louis C.K. Yeah, but you know something, you had a good time all the way, so it never. Really oh yeah, mattered. it's it, well. Once you're in show business, yeah. once I mm. didn't have to be a waiter, and this is my job. Right, right. I it was the most exciting thing ever. Yeah, that's right. I yeah. never thought, you know, I just had a series of little breaks as opposed to some huge people. What was your big break? Well, it wasn't. I, yeah. you know. Before I did Carson, I did Wade on Flowers and Madam. Ah. I did Dinosaur Show. I remember I did Dinosaur. I don't know why I thought this was so funny. But I'm with Dinosaur. Jay, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Dinosaur. How you doing? Talking about, she says, tell me about your family. And I, and I have a brother. He's 10 years older. I know, okay. And now I was like 23, 24 at this time. Okay. And I said, you have any older sister? Dinosaur goes, yeah, I have an older sister. She's 85. I went 85. Holy shit. I've never met anybody with a sister Cougar. who was 85. I didn't have any friends yeah. in it. 85. 85 year old sister. And I, I did, she said, wow, what's so funny? I, I, <laughs> you laughed in the face. Lost it. I just yeah. couldn't tell. I don't know why I thought that was so hilarious. Because you always think of it. You're 16. Your brother's 19. Yeah. They're 25. The fact that, and of course, Dinah shows all those people. Maybe she's 60, maybe she's four. I don't know how old she was. Mm -hmm. Makeup, you know, 
And yeah. just the fact that, you, you know, that I'm this young and you have an 85 year old sister, I just, it just, I couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, you probably didn't know how old she was at all. Like, yeah. I don't know anyone on TV how old they were. I never even thought of them. They're just a person on TV. Yeah, right. And exactly. you age, you go, holy shit. They right. were all old when you when you're growing up. Because yeah. yeah. they were coming from radio and movies. It was Jack Benny. Right. He yeah. made jokes about Bob Hope. I didn't know he was like I never met him. I would have loved to have met Benny. I he yeah, he was my all time favorite. Just mm -hmm. just the best. I, I knew Hope a little bit and I did some things with him and he was very nice. But he wasn't a comedian. He was a funny guy yeah. and he could sing and dance mm -hmm. and you know, he could do it yeah. all. And you know, kept all the writers on staff, but not no, an ad libber guy like no. like Newhart. Nobody funnier than Newhart. No, yeah. and and I I don't know if this is true, but you always wonder behind the scenes. I I people had told me that Jack Benny was just the most generous comedian. Yeah, like yeah. he would be in the wings and really laugh. And go, Isn't he great? You yeah. know, just that type of person. Yeah, it's nice to hear. You know, Cosby used to be that way. You know, I I remember I was Bing, at, huh? Bing Cosby. Cosby. No, Bill Cosby. Oh, Bill. Bill Cosby. Oh, yeah, before the, yeah. <laughs> I remember I, I was <laughs> opening for Neil, Neil, Neil Sadaka <laughs> up in Tahoe. Say and Neil yeah. Sadaka got sick, so they're oh. bringing Bill Cosby in. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, well, I guess I, and Cosby said, no, no, have Leno open. That'll be fun. And oh, my name was as big as his on the marquee. I mean, all these things he didn't have to do. Mm -hmm. He's very nice, yeah. you know? And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, he had two girls with him, which I, I that's none, a whole of my, none of my business. Sure, that's another, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, a you little know, we, appetizers. I think, yeah. uh, Chris Rock wanted to see him one time, or Adam, and we all flew out to Vegas, and uh, I think this is before the shit show, but we all went out there, probably Kevin James, Rock, Sandler, maybe two others, and then we watched him. He did about two hours. Right. Went back and talked to him. It was probably the end of the era of like the old exciting seeing Cosby yeah. talking to, he's talking to his uh, younger comics and giving us time, which you used to do to, I worked at Vegas once and uh, you let me come down from the Riviera. I was probably opening for Jackie Vernon. Oh, when Jackie Steve, Vernon. Yeah. When Steve oh. Sharippa was, the, yeah. 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 The clicker. Yeah. yeah. But, you, but someone you invited down and he said, is it okay if this other comic comes? You said, sure. And we went to Caesars or something and you bought us all breakfast at midnight. And oh, that's funny. Jay was good about that. Always well, one, letting the comics come. One thing about the you know competition thing that never ends, and it, it just made me laugh so hard. I was doing Washington State and you play the field house. So it's kind of mom and dad day or something. So you, you're going to get a lot of people. Right. But Cosby had played there the year before, and I guess he did 10,000. So the promoter said that Cosby had called and wanted to know what numbers I got. And he said, don't tell me he got more than about 6,000. You know, he was really into yeah, beating. that's funny. Well, you know what's you know, funny? I remember I had Joey Bishop on the Tonight Show once. Joey Bishop. Now, Competitive yeah. with oh, Regis, but that's another story. Oh, well, hey, here you go. Here you go. Yeah. This is, sorry, he comes out and he. Joey he's, Bishop. He, he, he's funny <laughs> on the panel. So, mm -hmm. so I say, well, Joey, good seeing you. Okay, my next guest, a very funny comedian. Uh, please welcome Louis Anderson. So Louis's doing stand up. He's getting big laughs, you know, and I feel this tug. Hey, hey, you think that's funny than what I did? I go, well no, well, no, you think that's funny what I did? I go, well, no. I said, you're a natural comic. He's doing an act. You know, I'm just trying to get him to shut up because the audience <laughs> is like, what's going on? You know, I can see Louis being distracted. distracted, you know. Wow. So I'm saying, he goes, and then he, you think, you think that shit is good? You think it's good? That shit. Yeah, I'm going, um, and this is post Rat Pack, all of oh, it. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he didn't, well, he was very weird. <laughs> like one time Sinatra, Sinatra called him and asked him to, uh, to, there was some kind of benefits Sinatra was going to do it. He couldn't do it. Joey, could you step in? And he tells Sinatra, yeah, but I got to get 50 grand. And Sinatra said, like, well, you know, um, well, just do the gig. Nah, you know, I don't mean to put your feet to the fire, but I got to get 50 yeah. grand. And it was like, well, that was the end of it after that. It was like, what are Sinatra. you doing? Talk right. about taking the TC. Yeah. I mean, Sinatra asked you to. I work with him. I work with Sinatra. We went, we did Duke University, right? So this is like the heart of the Bible. Bill. College gigs. <laughs> yeah, so I go in and I do my, because it was a Perry Como invitational, but Perry Como <laughs> got sick. So Sinatra said he'd fill in. Wow. So Sinatra comes down, he walks up, fly me to the moon. And uh, woo, the crowd goes crazy, you know? And then he goes, uh, hey, it's a nice town, but uh, where do you get a drink around here? N nothing. And you see him literally go, tap, tap the mic like, 
maybe they didn't hear me. <laughs> yeah. I gotta go strangers, and then I oh they go crazy strangers, and then I then, then, then he does the old joke about you know the I got to my hotel, there was no girl in the room, so they sent one up. <laughs> I mean, just he didn't just, understand. No, that it was and, and you could see the flop sweat. He was like, "What? What?" And you know, wow. this was like the Christian thing. Uh, yeah, mm. they wanted to hear the music. Didn't want None your stories. Don't want to hear about liquor. Don't want to yeah. hear about eating fried eggs off a hooker's stomach. Thank you. Just let's keep keep moving. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. By the way, there's a lot of lot of singers I see now, uh, and they do patter. You know, they do more and more. They do similar stand up. You know, they do a song, but I think they're bored with it, and then they do a joke, and the crowd likes it. You know, they give them a break, and then there's more of that, more of that in between every song. I, 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 and at a certain point, like just get to the, you know. Yeah. Of course, I don't want to be mean, but, and some of the jokes work. I saw Lionel Richie, he's like naturally like a likable, <laughs> funny guy. Right. He's mm -hmm. doing a lot of stuff and he's done stuff that's tried and true that just work. you know, works every night and it's right. great. And that makes it fun for him. McCartney did some stuff, you know, a little bit. Uh, we did it a couple, you know, <laughs> I, I got a few things that I, I just do. say it so he'll do that. Uh, you just want me to do it, Jane Leno? Yeah. Um, Adele does it and she's funny. I mean, I was watching going, she's a great singer. I think you're 90% there. Yeah. Everyone likes you already. You do a joke. It's fun. We well, have yeah. good joke writers writing yeah, good jokes. Yeah, I think jokes, people write them jokes. And you just did you ever work them? with McCartney? I did a benefit with him. I once, didn't so. work with him. I hung out with him, but not. So yeah. I made the big mistake of ordering a pepperoni pizza. Oh. So, so, I, got, so well, I got the box. I'm thinking maybe the band, like, oh, you guys want a slice? Oh, we love Gov, but the boss will he'll, he'll smell the meat on our breath. We, we can't take it. And I go, so, well, no, he goes, he's oh, coming. He he's goes, coming. Can you get that thing out of it? I had yeah. to hide the pizza. I'm like, I'm, oh, that's yeah, I'm, I'm putting like towels under the uh, door just to keep the smell of the pepperoni. I hope that's not pepperoni. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm smelling well, something. Where are my three backstage towels? Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so right. when you, because you didn't finish that, were you open for Cosby? Was he generous with you? Was that what you were after? Very nice. Yeah. Yes, very nice. And he had these two girls with him, like Thumper and Bam Bam. You know, they, they just just kind of weird. <laughs> I know them. Tahoe area? Yeah. 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 And <laughs> my wife and I Stumper. and he and the two girls mm -hmm. and we go out to dinner and my wife would go, is he sleeping with these? I go, I guess so. I, I don't know. But they were adults. It's not mm -hmm. like they were, yeah. un, you know, so to me, what do I know? I don't know what your situation is at home. Yeah. And, and the four of us would go and do stuff and he, and he was very nice, but it just got stranger and stranger. And eventually on the Tonight Show, all the female, um, talent coordinators refused to work with them because you know he'd be sitting in his box of shorts oh, and they'd be open and they'd be yeah. like oh this is not good you know it we yeah, it was very very weird mm -hmm. just very strange very eccentric i yeah. it played this casino in central oregon and they said cosby would always come in two days early on a g5 right you couldn't be making that much in the room yeah he'd get a, a yeah. rotary old-fashioned phone in the room <laughs> right. so he could call his friends they'd have the chefs come up because he'd bring philadelphia hot dogs in in yeah. the freezer and, and explain how to cook it. Right. And at corporate dates, he'd get 20 cookies on a tray and leave them outside his dressing room. <laughs> he'd go to his set and then he would come back and cookies. count the cookies. And Who if one, one was missing, it was not a good evening. I put was, 20 cookies on the bread and I've got 18 cookies. Because some, he didn't Bambi? leave them out there for people? Or were they no, no, it just left them. They're just subtly out there. And then if some were missing, he was very Was honest. it entrapment? I don't know if this is made up if Bill is listening, but. You know. I like when you get crazier and more famous and, and just older. crazy. You just start going, famous. I need this, I need this shit. And yeah, yeah. the stories I hear about people on the road. And like, like you said, they're apologizing because they don't have my blue chips. And then you go. What went so wrong <laughs> that you're this scared? And they're like, we had J Lo or whoever, you know, right. J Lo, not J Leno. <laughs> no, not J Leno. Yeah. You're you're not J Lo, are you? <laughs> you're the most low maintenance entertainer ever, from Lee. what I understand. Well, I try to keep. You want just... popcorn? Maybe Pop chips, or no popcorn? Right joke. Tell Joe. Tell Joe. Get get Dude, is that your merch? Yeah. It sells. Yeah. I like yeah. that. Do you have water on stage exclusively, or yeah. sometimes you have a Coca Cola or nothing? No, just, just water. water. Just water. You drink. Do I drink now? No. Don't. No. I got a question. We got like before. No, we, I got a lot more. No, to before say. I let you go, I want to ask about his cars. I'm right. What is the most? Yeah, I know you don't like talk money, but what is the? What are your top cars you have at that juicy garage? That I well, wanna, a top meaning what you mean? Ex probably expensive. Well, one? I'm one sure that you love the most first. Well, I like them all. I, I want mean, the favorite. 
Uh, <laughs> I mean, I guess the F1 McLaren would be the one. Okay. Um, I mean, I bought it in 98 for $800,000. People, you're out of your mind. I love it. I love this it. Is, I love this it. one's thing I wanted. And the last offer I got was 20 mil. So. I mean, goddamn. Those, me, you, those so I went to Barrett Jackson. I go to Barrett Jackson every year. Wow. Those are a little tricky because they do get you on the way in and way out. Like right. If you sell one, there's a little vig. You got to give them a little wet the beak a little bit. So, but it is fun to go there. And and like you, like people that, like, that uh, have an interest, I would take so many and I, I'm i jealous you have this place you keep them because I have my dumpy garage and I live on a hill and it just it's just not the same as these car guys in Nebraska. It's, well, it's flat. Gorgeous. Have a big oh, yeah, it's yeah. a big It's a gorgeous place. It's so could. fun. Yeah. I have a duster. I have an old Cherokee. I, have a, I just have cars I see. I think they're cool. You had the Hemi uh, Charger. I had the Hemi, uh, that's right, the Hemi uh, Daytona. Yeah. Or Daytona. Yeah, I sold it and then if people said it was crazy. They just sold it for more. They, right. I, I sold it to another guy and then it just, over time, they just go up. They can't help it. Right, right. And yeah, people yeah. don't realize that. They were at the last Barrett Jackson going up so much higher than I would guess. It was a noticeable jump. Like right. crazy where you go, this is, I don't know how they're, you know, but it'll go up, it'll take longer, but they'll go up. Well, it's a good way to launder money too. Is that what they do? They I'm a cartel guy. I buy a car for three hundred thousand. I sell it to another cartel guy for eight hundred thousand. Yeah. He now has profit. He can declare as income. Wow. See, I have profit. And then the next guy sells at a loss for two hundred. Oh, I took a loss. Oh, oh he did that. So I mean, it's it's a good way to hide money and move money. As I, I don't do it that. Down. But it, you told me once, uh, t just casually, that it's uh, uh, about the story. In yeah, McCarr's well, got a good story. Yeah, because I have a friend true. who collects antique bottles and digs them out of the Sierra Nevadas, and right. he's completely connected to that prospector or those people. So you get a Studebaker or some or a family car. It's emotional, right? Because you're connecting to the family that took that trip. Or oh whatever. yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Or to who me. owned it? I mean, sometimes. Yeah. Or it has a story. Sometimes. Well, get... I mean, my favorite. I you know I I had a Hudson Hornet, a '53. So this woman calls me, 94 years old. She's got a 51 Hudson Hornet. Her husband and her bought it new in New Jersey. They drove out to California with their kids. It's the only car they ever had. He died in 96. This is back in 2005. And it's been sitting from 96 to 2005 when I, when I buy it. I go, I don't really need, what can come out? So I go out and it's not bad. It's got four flat tires and you know, it's, it's just been sitting. Not great. So I said, I'll, I'll give you, what do you want? She goes, 5,000. I said, all right, I'll give you 5,000. So I buy it for $5,000. Take it back to the garage. It takes me about a year and a half. I get it all stored. I said, let me call her up. See, she's now she's 96. Okay. So I said, hey, I got the car. Do you want to go for a ride? Oh, I'd love to go. I got to get my hair done. Now, this woman's 96, no hearing and no glasses. I said, okay, I'll come. She goes, can the kids come? I said, uh, yeah. Well, the kids are 72 and 74. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Dying so I drive out to the place in the car and they've got her blindfolded in the driveway waiting for me, you know. And she's like the elephant and the blind man touching the car. And I would take the blindfold. Oh, it's beautiful. Can go for it. Uh, can the kids get in the back? Okay, kids get in the back. So the kids get in the back. And we're driving, we're talking, you know. Meanwhile, the 72 year old and 72 year old start poking each other like this, you know. And the mother goes, hey, hey, I told you. And turns out, starts whacking the crap out of him, just smashing him in the face with, I told you his Miss Lennon was nice enough to take him. And the three of them are just laughing, having the time of their life. <laughs> she died at 106. Yeah, and wow. it was just a great story. I mean, yeah. every time I drive that car, I think of those the seventy-two-year-old and say four-year-old poking each other like this, you know, in the back seat. Mm, She's turned around with the mom. and just just whacking. Nice. Them. And that. And, oh, and then the, then the 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 two kids told me that when they were in high school, they were so ashamed their dad had this old car that they would have him drop them off like three blocks from school, and they'd mm. walk the rest of the way because they didn't want to be seen in this <laughs> old car. And of course, now it's a classic, you know, all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. So, yeah. I mean, that makes for a great story. Sure. Some of those, and, and the movie cars go for a lot. They're, that's Steve Mar I mean, uh, Steve McQueen Bullet uh, Mustang. I think that went for $5 million. And that was like- No, that went for uh, 3.7. 3. Yeah, yeah. I, I drove that car. It was, it was the most beat to crap old yeah. Mustang. And being a stunt car, it had holes cut in yeah. the floor, you know, for cameras and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. It really wasn't worth a whole lot. I mean, that's a car that is worth a lot because it, it would have gone for $5 million if they'd sold it a year earlier on the 50th anniversary mm -hmm. of the movie. Because anybody who can afford that car is probably going to be in their late 60s, early sure. 70s. Okay, now they're going to be 80. Okay, okay now that... Now kids don't even know the movie anymore. Yeah. You know, so it's a whole different Interesting. thing. There are certain things that 
fit in certain time, you know. And if they can prove it, have to prove that it is what it's supposed to oh, be. Oh, that was the real one. Yeah, yeah, that was the real one. It's mm-hmm. like DeLorean. It's a terrible car, but because of the movie Back to the Future, mm-hmm. you know. And you have car. motorcycles, so do you have a favorite between the cars and motorcycles or no? Obviously, <laughs> just well, I like them both. Level. I mean, it Seinfeld's really hurts a- when you fall off a motorcycle. Yeah, oh it's like, God. Jesus, how? how? How are these other injuries right now for you? I mean, the- Well, I still crack- have the broken collarbone and the two broken ribs. You, or is it just set all the time or what do you- <laughs> Yeah, it's like, <laughs> I'm tipped to, as long as I don't sneeze or cough, I'm it's okay. Funny. And it'll just heal over time. Those. I hope so. Okay. It's only been three, four weeks. Well, it's been a month since the motorcycle. How do you sleep then? Just on your back? Or? Yeah, you just sleep on your back. You just kind of stare at the ceiling. And it's a, uh, yeah, that's kind of tricky. I sleep for like two hours and I get up for two hours. Mm. And then I'll read until I get so tired and fall asleep. Mm. And, and that's pretty sound for a couple of hours. Yeah. yeah I mean, you, I the went crack to bed. kneecaps, how are they? I mean, because you're going to stand on stage for. Standing is easy. Okay. It, it, you know, that, that's Jesus. fine. You know, I was doing two nineties back to back the last couple of weeks, and it was okay, except later when you, <laughs> and then when you kind of need to sit down. Two nineties, two ninety minute shows, you know. Back oh, to back. I got it. Yeah. I don't think people at home understand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so, are you a lefty, or you keep the mic in the stand mostly, or? No, I'm lefty. You hold it. So right. then you just use that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, I still use it. It's okay. It's not not bad. It's yeah. not too bad. Does that scare you? Like at a certain point, I think. You could always use a stool. I could use a stool. I mean, it, you can do stand up for pretty much longer than any other job. Yeah, I don't use a stool, and I don't do old jokes, mm-hmm. only because and now you've put it in the audience's mind that you're old. Yeah, you know. So I just try to avoid the, you know, can't pee jokes and all this kind of stuff. Right. So you just try to keep it. Yeah, I don't. I mm-hmm. don't talk about young things either. Yeah. You know? I mean, I always used to love, you know, Shandling always used to make me laugh. They go, I'm seeing this chick now. now Gary, how, how old are you? <laughs> I know. How old is this girl? You know, that used to make me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, there's a certain point they don't want to hear sex jokes from. That's I right. keep yeah, seeing yeah, the say, 40. You know, when you're, when you're 26 and you use the word pussy, they are, oh, he said pussy. Oh, you yeah. know. When you're 40, ooh, that old guy said, you know. Yeah. Anything <laughs> else for Jay? What do you got, Dana? Because I feel like. Um, I can't watch him wince in pain anymore. <laughs> no, I'm all right. No, you're pretty good. You didn't cancel. It was very nice. Yeah, no, even, I don't cancel. Doesn't even, uh, you know, that's a big thing about comics. I go to the comedy store. Oh, you want to go up next? These two canceled. And every night I go, who's canceling? Like, show up for your goddamn I gig. Know, I know. What else do you I have? I hate canceling anything. What else do you have to do? Well, you know what? If one person came down to see you, like, it's like when I do the road, I got sick on the road and my voice is going out and I go, Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll try it. I told the crowd, I go, hey, I didn't want to cancel. You're all here. It's packed. Yeah. And, yeah. and and I said, if everyone just, we crank up the mic a little bit and nobody laughs for an hour, we can get through this. Yeah. That's my bet. <laughs> no one well, laughs for an hour. Do you get that part? That's funny. No one laughs for an hour. Yeah, we'll get through it. Right. Right. Yeah. But uh, you well, know, I, I always tell comics, somebody's always seen you for the first time. Yeah. I remember mm-hmm. once I had an audition for Harris at the comedy store. Harris, I love it. Uh, yeah, and oh, yeah. they came Played in to that. see me, and I didn't get it. I go, why? I was clean. Well, you can't work our club with jeans. I go with jeans. I, well, I just, I just, oh, I can put on. He goes, something. well, we came to see you. Do what you do at our club. Whoa! You know, I said, okay, if I come. Can you come back when? Yeah, we'll come. So I put a suit on and went back, and I got the job. So when you got dinged, uh, whatever, like things didn't work and or bombing at clubs, or it seems to me you'd have a lot of resilience or uh, things you'd say to yourself, or was it, I mean, because no, I, I got hurt when I bombed auditioning for SNL. I followed Kennison in 83 at the right. Comedy Store. All right. Horrible Impossible. bomb. And I go, oh, that was my shot. So I was kind of, I mean, I was yeah. functional, but I was down for a couple of months. I'm a huge believer in low self-esteem. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's the key. A good line. No, agree. it is. It's the key to success. Because if yeah. you don't think you're the smartest person there, you're always trying. Oh uh, yeah, that's I me. Mean, if I see some, I mean, I know so many comics. They did a the bit worked in Denver two years ago, and they've been doing it ever since. And then they'll go, "No, I did this in Denver. Kill." I know it only worked once. <laughs> I've seen you do it five. It doesn't work anymore. Mm. Get rid of it. Mm. They cannot get rid of material. Get, throw out everything that's not funny. Pryor. You know, that's why I followed Pryor every night. When when when, when Richie was, I mean, we called him Richie Pryor. Oh, now fuck, it's, he, how crazy yeah. Richard yeah. Pryor. Yeah, and and he was great. 
I mean, he was the maybe, best, the really the best funny. Ever. Yeah. And I said to Mitzi, can I go on after prior every night? And she said, yeah, because nobody wanted the spot. And I realized I didn't have 45 minutes. I had 18 minutes, but I it was the tightest 18 minutes because mm -hmm. this audience had been listening to prior and there was just, boo, boo. so I just did the funniest stuff I had and I threw everything else away. Right. And you just have to have that discipline to do that. To I mean, so many guys go up and they just screw around. You're there to work. You have 20 minutes work come up with stuff, try new material, you know, make it tighter, throw mm -hmm. out every word that's not funny and just tighten okay, it up. Okay, I have an idea for you. Yeah. we One of our sponsors yeah. <laughs> is Masterclass. Oh, we should teach you Master's class. class. And and Steve Martin's on one, people don't want, yeah. but you have a very specific point of view that's really, really uh, would be, would help people who have talent and discipline. Well, yeah, I mean, to mm -hmm. me, Seinfeld and I have this discussion all the time. Uh, it's an art form. You need to be a specific, tight. You're not up there to screw. I know so many, they just get up and they screw around and they think that that's funny. Yeah, I got a laugh. Yeah, but you had this two minute, every six to nine seconds, you should get a laugh. I love that. That's about uh, right. You know, when you when, say? When I, uh, think I, about I would say, yeah, you, you should, yeah, like six laughs yeah, a minute yeah, or more. Yeah, but you're getting a laugh every six to nine seconds because maybe it's not a joke, but it's a funny impression or it's a, yeah. a funny manner. No, you know I, I mean? want it to roll. I came from watching Rob Williams yeah. and he was the one like would do his thing and come back to San Francisco. I thought I have work to do. Right, yeah. <laughs> so I kept going, if that is the standard, I have a lot more work to right, do. Right, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, uh, amazing how lazy people are. When I started in Arizona, there was, uh, as I said to Colin Quinn, I go, I started and there's no comedy scene. He goes, is there one now? <laughs> I go, oh, I guess not really. But in Arizona, you know, no one was doing stand-up when I started. Yeah. So you had to really want to do it because right. I think now it's kind of cooler. It's a bigger deal. You see people playing theaters, arenas. So more people gravitate to that yeah. and they just do whatever. I always remember a comic said to me, he said, well, you and Seinfeld, you guys are lucky. You started during the golden age of comedy when everything was funny. Now, it's, now that's, that's no golden age of comedy. What are you <laughs> Shut up, what are you idiot. Yeah, as if anybody has a free pass. You and Seinfeld rose up because you were killing. It had to be good. And influencing well, other comics. Well, you try to you keep know. it tight. You know, I just, yeah, I, I don't, the people that don't really work at it, I don't, I don't, why are you in this, you know? It's the most important thing. It's the only thing you do all day. Yeah. There's something very painful, I think, about getting with your notes. It's not painful for Jerry, <laughs> but getting with your notes and doing the icky part, the college essay part of a bit that you like. It's it not working. You know, uh, Jerry's has, he's, he's like you. He's like, if a joke stops working, check the setup. Right. Because right. sometimes you lose the thread of it. One word's off yeah, and the right. whole thing unravels. So there is a lot, a lot it's of It's not a part-time job. If that's your job, yeah. You think about it in the day. You think right. about you observe mm -hmm. things. You try to scribble right. things down. You that's it. You get into it. Mm -hmm. I was obsessed with it. So. Yeah, I always say if I have any problems, I take care of them before I go on stage. Even if I'm right, I apologize to the other person I'm angry with because I don't need that in my head yeah. as I'm working. You know, you oh, just I want see. you just yeah. want to be able to. Yeah, there's nothing else more important. and be in a good mood. Uh, yeah, I exactly. just say I, uh, the th last thing I say to myself before I go out there is remember to have fun. Right. You know, just remember this should be fun and that, that'll that help the audience yeah. too. Yeah, I, I agree. Sometimes I'm out there and go, why am I not having fun? Forgot, yeah. I forgot to have fun. <laughs> Think of it like torture. All right, well, anyway, Jay, well, Jay we Leno, Jay. we're gonna take a 20 minute break. Jay's no, like, Jay what? is- uh, no, we're, we're done. We're this done. is where we say we're nice done. things. Yeah. Uh, there's only been a few people that have uh, done a talk show for that number of years and mm -hmm. done it at a high level. Mm -hmm. um, I guess you did a total of quarter century. 22 it? years. 22 yeah, years. Like uh, 40, 50 years of a stand-up, and you're still out there, and you're vibrant. And I was always a stand-up. TV was always a, a just. I know I, that was great. The thing about yeah. it that you just you yeah, say. I mean, it. I can't imagine like people come out here, they got on a sitcom for thirteen weeks. This is coming canceled, and then you're back to being a waiter again. Oh my God, I can't imagine. You know, at least right. with stand-up, you could always hustle mm -hmm. a buck somewhere. It's you know. its own lane. Yeah, it's I mean, when I separate. was in Boston, I would go to bars, and they didn't do comedy. Then it was always, it was like, "Stop your war machine, man!" It was that was kind of you know. Yeah. Kinda, <laughs> and I would put fifty bucks on the bar, and I'd say to the bartender, "Let me go on and tell jokes. If I get a laugh, give me the fifty back. If I don't get a laugh, you keep the fifty. And that cost me about four hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> it did. It did. That's but why it, you lived in the storage room. Yeah, but eventually. <laughs> 
Eventually they would go, no, it's okay. You, you, that's okay. Here, here's your money back. You know, and then mm -hmm. okay, now I got, I got comedy in there. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah, and then you go back and you MC before you introduce the. The, the, I played delicatessens. Yeah, yeah, had all chips around me. And stuff. A lot of places in Arizona, you <laughs> yeah. do those one nighters, twenty bucks if they gave you anything. You go, you do a set, and then Thursdays were the NFL Club, Seekers, Chuckles. You know, those yeah, places. but I did a corporate as uh, Bob Johnson, director of sales. This is so stupid. This guy had invented this product called Freshen. They were called soft, moist towelettes. You use after defecating to avoid embarrassing rectal odor. And it was a big roll, it was a, a, a wet roll of toilet paper that, <laughs> that, that you stuck on the wall next to toilet paper that you're supposed to wipe your ass with, you know. So he brings me and he sees me, he goes, listen, I want you, to be, you'll be Bob Johnson, my director of sales. I got like 50 Liggett Rexall distributors. So mm. I'm gonna talk about the product, I'll bring you on. You, okay. So I go up there and I, I, this guy's selling, the, he's talking about the product, you know. And you see the, the Rexel deals are like, <sighs> they're all squirming. Then he goes, take, take some home, try it on your own family. Nobody, nobody's volunteering to take, you know. So they go, well, well, first, wait, before you make your mind, let me bring on Bob, <laughs> my director of sales. Bob, come on up here. So I go up there and I, I do my, I'm getting nothing, just nothing. You know, mm -hmm. and then I ended. He goes, "That was not Bob Johnson, of course, but Jay Leno, a professional comedian." And I hear the audience go, "Professional comedian." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're, they're, just, they're all really angry, right? So, so now people start leaving. He goes, "Don't leave, please. Take a sample home, please try it." And then he starts crying. And then he goes, "Look, I, I, I got like fifty grand invested. In it. Just try it. Just try it. Just, just take it. Just it. And nobody's taking it. You know. Really? So I'm right, and I said, "Can I get paid?" No. No, you don't get paid. Oh. Yeah, you want to get paid? It takes them. So I left with like 10 freshened things. And the guy's <laughs> crying. And the guy's crying, yeah. Because, oh. yeah, he, he lost his shirt on this deal. But I Good just Lord. remember they going, that was not, of course, Bob Johnson, but Jay Leno. Oh, yes. <laughs> Professional. <laughs> Let's everyone know. That's show business. The unfunny guy you just saw. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh God. Right. Well, thank you, Jay. Thank you, well, Jay. Thank, thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate thank you, guys. You thank you. This has been a podcast presentation of Cadence 13. Please listen, then rate, review, and follow all episodes. Available now for free wherever you get your podcast. No joke, folks. Fly on the Wall has been a presentation of Cadence 13. Executive produced by Dana Carvey and David Spade, Chris Corcoran of Cadence 13, and Charlie Finan of Brillstein Entertainment. The show's lead producer is Greg Holtzman with production and engineering support from Serena Regan and Chris Basil of Cadence 13. 